Mikel who gets the catch. He's got patrol. It's a Friday in November, which means that we are rapidly approaching the state tournament in boys' high school football. And for the third consecutive year, the Montemino Zephyrs and the Tartan Titans face off with a trip to the state tournament on the line. However, this time we are in Oakdale, not Montemino, for a chance to go to the big dance. Alongside John Miller, I'm Alex Westhead. And John, a matchup that we called earlier in the year between these two schools ended up being a little bit of a blowout. Do we expect the same tonight? Or is there a different fate in mind for the Montemino Zephyrs? I mean, for our sake, I hope that it's uh, it's a little different than the last time. I mean, 41 to 14 was the score. Uh, I think it's going to be the same way. I think this Tartan team uh, is now the the class of the suburban grade division, Alex. And they Matamidi just doesn't have. We talked about it a lot this year when we covered Matamidi. They just don't have the star power they've had of years past. And Tartan, they absolutely do. Well, the Tartan Titans, number four in the latest class four, uh, class five A rankings, the highest that Tartan has ever been. And really, compared to the last couple of years, Matamidi hasn't been close to that range either. So quite some progress for the Tartan Titans to be up near the top of the conversation for schools in, section, in Class 5A. Yeah, I mean, a lot of their playmakers are just juniors as well for this Tartan squad. And normally what we saw from Matamida is, you know, they'll be senior heavy, they'll play a lot of seniors, they'll rotate the next class is just as good. And then that'll, that that was been happening for the last four or five years. And this year, the, the senior class just isn't what it was. I don't, you know, they didn't get a lot of run last year. And now you see why. Well, it's a good transition to our next conversation. The last 10 meetings, Matamidi 6-4 and four against Tartan, but the last three have all gone the way of the Titans. What's been different for Tartan in that time? I mean, Tartan's just got a fast squad. You have guys like Tian Dang and Dorian Singer who can just blow you out, and they they have a lot of running backs. They don't even play some of their star running backs some, sometimes during the game. A lot of these guys are two-way players. Um, Dang can grind you down, and they only give him like 10 to 12 carries a game, and then they have you know some other sophomores and juniors who are just going to come in and keep him fresh and you know the the quarterback play uh, for them has also been fantastic Brandon Lockhart has had an amazing year and he and Singer seem to have quite the connection sometimes he gets a little heavy focusing on Singer when Singer's on the field and healthy um, but you know what this team uh, this team has a lot of studs especially the kicker number here 99 Kimonia who's committed to South Dakota State. Well, a date with either Mankato West or Chaska on the line tonight here at Oakdale and we will start off with immediately a kick out of bounds. And it will give the Zephyrs generous field position. A problem that they had in the first matchup this year between the two of them was the Zephyrs oftentimes were pinned deep in their own zone. So important for them to start out on the good side of the football. Yeah, I think they, it took them until like the third, second or third, midway through the second or the third quarter to even get past the 50-yard line uh, before they put up 14 points. But yeah, this is good field position for Matamida. You couldn't ask for a better, you know, gift from Tartan to start the section championship. And now they have great field position. Let's see if they can make something of it. So Matamida will operate first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. Passing leaders in the section play. It's number 12, Benjamin Allen. 10 of 26, 135 yards, two touchdowns, but with two interceptions to accompany that as well. So we'll see how the young man, the third quarterback of the year, and it's not, it's DeVore, rather. First pass immediately caught by Tangwall down to the 41-yard line, and a nice little gain on the pass play there on first down. Yeah, I like that. You know, Tangwall is the best wide receiver they have on this Matamidi squad, and at times they've kind of went away from him. But I still think even if they get that quick passing game going, they're going to have to try to run it to set, uh, set that pass up as well. Well, that pass came up. So with Jonathan, Jonathan DeVore at quarterback, we've seen him a couple of times this year, John. We have, we've seen him move the ball well on the ground, but passing through the air has been an issue for him. So second and four from the 41-yard line. The Cadence strong as well. We'll watch that. Hand off to Prammel. Right back up the middle. Got one yard to the 42, and it'll be an early third down for the Zephyrs. Yeah, I mean, DeVore didn't have the greatest of seasons. I mean, he did have a 53.2 completion percentage, only 8.6 
yards per attempt to two touchdowns, a good thing for him. Well, according to this is that he had zero interceptions on the year. I, I highly doubt that these stats are 100% correct because we saw him have a couple uh, throughout this season. But yeah, he's gonna have to start off hot and uh, definitely play well in this game against a defense that will control the line of scrimmage real well. Bonamita approaches the line third and three from their own 42 yard line, I formation. DeVore with Prammel as the far back. It'll be a pitch to Prammel off to the left side. He gains a hole across to the 45, down to the 47, and a huge first down for Matamida. Yeah, nice, nice job by Prammel, just you know, not doing too much. He saw the hole, he hit it, he picks up the first down, and now, you know, we're not even a couple minutes into the first quarter, and they're almost past the 50-yard line. Prammel in the section play, 30 attempts for 181 yards, two touchdowns, and John, the conversation we had earlier this week, never co count out a Coach Metzl, Coach Matamida football team, and certainly with how they perform against Washburn on Saturday. Certainly want to hold on to that belief. Yeah, it was definitely a game they struggled, but they ended up pulling it out with a 15 to 12 win. I mean, they're, they're here, and Coach Metzl knows how to win in section play. DeVore with a shot down the left sideline looking for Tangwall. He got, got it. What a catch. Tyler Tangwall, the senior, a dart in to Tartan territory. Oh, wow. Just what Matamidi needed, an absolute shot. And that was all Tango on that underthrown pass. He had his defensive back beat by a mile. He just goes up there and gets it. Beautiful play for a gain of about 44 yards. 10-04 remaining here, first quarter of play. Matamida on their first drive. Tartan will get another crack at the ball soon enough. And again, you see there just that size advantage going on that far side with Easton Strecker and a good advantage there taken by Tangwall. It'll be first and 10. Now for Matamidi from the Tartan 14-yard line. This will go eye formation again. DeVore mishandled the handoff, but the Prammel carries it forward down to the one-yard line. And again, Prammel explosive up the line for a first down. Yeah, Prammel not doing too much. He just cuts it back, hits the hole. He almost outstretched that one to get into the end zone. He's just short. And this is a this is the drive that Matamidi needed, and I think we're going to have a ball game here, Alex. It'll be first and goal for Matamidi here from the one yard line again, you look at that play on the screen where just a great ball by Tyler Tangwall. And really the senior experience of a receiver like Tangwall to be able to get up and make the adjustment. Yeah, I feel like we've been talking about Tangwall for a few years. So first and goal from the one. DeVore under center again, handoff. Prammel has to cut it back, trying to get past the goal line. Looks like he'll be short, and a nice job by the Tartan defense, second and goal. You gotta call a QB sneak here, Alex. They, you know, they're having trouble with the snap on the last couple of snaps. And a little bobble and then extra, you know, a couple seconds or split seconds takes a, uh, makes that play just that much longer to create. DeVore in the regular season, again, unofficially, 23 attempts for a loss of negative 13 yards, but in this short territory, the quarterback sneak certainly could be effective. It definitely could. I mean, you know, it doesn't look like, let's look here. There's really nobody to the left of the center, right above them. I mean, you you pretty much only have four linemen down this would be easy walking if he just takes it himself. DeVore and it's a false start. Side. We saw that in the last game we called between Matamidi and Tartan, where the, the way that the quarterbacks tried to draw Tartan offside, it worked well in that matchup it really this did. time. Doesn't go their way, and it'll be first and second and goal, rather, from the seven this time. And they're about to run that QB sneak, too, just as we called it. Now you're sitting at second and six. I mean, you had second and one from the one yard line, ready to go into the end zone. And now you just have that much farther to go. And when the defense you know, has just a limited space to defend, this is a huge advantage for Tartan. 8.08 remaining, first quarter of play, no score. John Miller, alongside myself, Alex West, dead. They'll go second and goal here from the seven. DeVore handoff is to Prammel again. Prammel tripped up at the line, a couple of defensive linemen down for Tartan. And it'll be a gain of about three as it'll be third and goal this time. Yeah, it looks like he chipped over tight end Jacob Winia, who just fell down, and then Bramwell really had no room to go. He tried to hop over him, but he trips over those big legs. It'll be the ninth play here of this opening drive. Zephyrs and Titans as the Zephyrs start on the drive at the 35-yard line. This is four-down territory, Alex. You're on the road, section championship. You have to score a touchdown here. He'll go eye formation again, third and goal from the four. DeVore. Dropping back, he rolls off to the right to avoid pressure. Looking for Tangwell. Oh, in and out of the hands. He caught it. Touchdown, Matamida. Oh, my God. It didn't look like he kept.
got that one and bounce at all, but he was able to keep those feet in. Wow, an absolutely amazing play. An, yeah, I mean, an exclamation point for the Zephyrs to start this football game as they take the six to nothing lead. What a pass by DeVore, just putting that one up there to his playmaker. That's what you got to do. All gas, no break right here. And so a drive of four minutes, 44 seconds. Let's right. watch a replay here, Alex. I mean, DeVore does a great job just rolling out here, putting that one up for Tang Ball. He goes up and gets it. And it looks like it looks like he was out of bounds, Alex. That that's an incomplete pass. That was an incomplete pass. The extra point that time is good. And surprisingly, 7-16 remaining opening quarter. The Matamidai Zephyrs lead the Tartan Titans by a score of seven to nothing. Yeah, so a good break for Matamidai, and they're up seven to nothing at Tartan. I don't know what that ref on the goal line was seeing. Because that easily, I mean, you could just tell him we were just a little blocked right there, but there's no way his feet were in bounds when he caught that ball. So the winner of this one tonight faces off against Chaska or Mankato West out of Section 2 since the two teams. As we take another look at it here, you see DeVore doing a nice job there rolling out. And again, what makes this, as we look at this, an incomplete pass? Watch this. You know, he he's bobbling the ball. He's got that foot down right there. He still doesn't have it, still doesn't have it. Foot comes up, finally regains possession, hits out of bounds. I don't know what the ref was looking at, but <laughs> that's a bad, bad call. But you know what? Sometimes you need the breaks to go your way. And you know, you know, especially in the NCAA and call in, in pro football, replay can take too much away from the game. Um, but uh, that's <laughs> I don't know anything else to say about that, Alex. You broke that down. It's an incomplete pass, but it's a touchdown. Edward Brian will be kicking off here. It's a short squib kick, almost an onside one. It goes, oh, maybe Matamita have gotten it. On the far sideline, the official runs to That's the ball. ball it should be Matamita football. We'll wait to see the official signal. They haven't made it yet. No, they will say Tartan. They haven't given the arrow one way or the other. It looks like Tartan football. And that could have been disastrous for the Tartan Titans. Yeah, not too sure what the Tartan kick returner was doing there. You know, he, the, the up man, he uh, should have just let that ball roll out of bounds. So either way, it'll be first and 10 for Tartan from the 35-yard line. Same spot where Montemini started their drive last week for Tartan as they faced off against St. Paul Central and the Minutemen. Quarterback Brandon Lockhart, 9 of 16, 176 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. So we've been very impressed in the games of Tartan that we've called the ability of Brandon Lockhart to create something out of nothing. Yeah, Lockhart's just a junior, so it's been fun to see him grow. And like I said, these guys are all going to be practically returning next year to pretty much be doing the same thing in the same spot. And off to Dang up the middle. He got three to the Tartan 38-yard line. will be second and seven. And Tian Dang on the year, another running back that we've been really impressed with last week against St. Paul Central. 16 carries, 116 yards. No touchdowns, but you're very the, the running back that you need to really pace your offense. Yeah, I mean, 10 yards per carry in section plays, no, no small feat, and especially um, when you're trying to keep your time of possession. I mean, this, this kid's good. Single back set for Tartan. Be second and seven from their own 38. Quick screen to the near side. It's Dorian Singer. Singer trying to get back to the 40. He's able to make a little move there and gets out near the 43-yard line. And a nice little play to make it third and short right about the 43-yard line. Yeah, nice play by Singer, really making something out of nothing there, breaking a couple tackles. He is bundled up tonight, Alex. He's got he's got the, you know, the ski mask on. He's got the long sleeves. It looks like he's even got warming pants under those pants. I mean, he is... <laughs> He's trying to keep his body warm tonight. Well, and John, you've played football under these conditions, and of course, certainly backyard football, high school football, whatever that may be. How much does weather affect you? It doesn't. You know, you, you're warm down there. Those guys are really warm. You're always doing something. Unless you're on the sideline right now, you're really, really not that cold. I mean, look at Singer. I mean, he's jogging up and down. Your body's warm. And there's a false start there uh, by Tartan. It'll be a false start on the Titans, so one both ways. William Mears jumps early for the team in blue. And for the Tartan Titans, one of their best seasons in school history, the fourth ranking in Class 5A, the number one seed for the first time since they've been a member of Section 4AA. And really, John, does anything less than a state tournament mean success on this season? No, but you know, if they don't win, um, if they don't win this game, I mean, it's not going to be the end of the world. I mean, last year was their first time in state. 
uh, making it to state in 40-something you know, years, I think it was. It was a ridiculous amount of time. Um, but this team's still young, like I said, and they, they're definitely primed for success. If they win this game, they have a real shot at state. Play action from Lockhart, incomplete. As he was looking over the middle, looked like it was a slant route. Little extra effort from the cornerback there from Montamina as they were looking for Camonier. It'll be fourth down in the three and out for Tartan on their initial drive of this game. And this is what you're seeing out of Coach Metzl led team. I mean, look how fast these guys are just running onto the field. They're hustling everywhere, and that's what they're going to need to do against this Tartan team who's super lightning fast at all the skill positions. And that's the way Montamina is going to be able to win this game. And now we'll see what they can do when they get the ball back. Nicholas Weisner back to return the punt. He stands at his own 29-yard line, 6-12 remaining here opening quarter. Matamidai 7, Tartan nothing. We've seen them fake punt before. And a high punt into the air goes out of bounds somewhere between the 40 and the 50-yard line of Matamidai. And again, a drive, their first drive started first and 10 from their own 35. This one will start first and 10 from their own 45. And if you're Tartan, you can't keep doing that. Oh, no, you just gave uh, Matamidai two great possessions with field position, or two possessions with great field position. Now, uh, Matamidai is primed to do it again, and it didn't look like, uh, you know, they had the good bomb, but Tartan's defense looked uh, not as good as they have right out the gate. So Tartan's four-play, three-yard drive ends up with a punt, and now Matamidai will have the ball first and 10 from their own 45-yard line. And, John, the recipe on that first drive, a big play to Tyler Tangwall, but then consistent running with Joshua Prammel. Yeah, Prammel's just taking what the defense give, gives them, and that's what I said the last time they have to play him. I mean, you've got to be able to balance out your offense, and they just went pass, 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 pass. Regardless if they get a run like that for minus one yard, I mean, you've got to feed Prammel, at least get him going, keep the defense honest. And as you saw, Pr or, uh, Tangwall on that deep bomb absolutely destroyed his wide or his defensive back. He had a lot of separation. I mean, that ball was underthrown. But I think we'll see something again. I think they're going to attack, and they're going to continue to try to put some points up on the board here to go up two scores because the lead's never safe against this Tartan team. So from first and 10 from the 45 to second and 11 from the 44-yard line, the Zephyrs will approach the line. They'll go I formation, two receivers out to the far side. Jonathan DeVore under center. Again, the line play of the center, something we'll talk about later, is the pitch this time to Prammel. Prammel trying to cut it back, and a nice defensive effort there by the Titans. I believe it was Jake Schwinghammer to bring Prammel down by the jersey and force a third down. Alex, how many times, every time we call a Tartan game, Schwinghammer is just all over the field. I mean, he's constantly in the backfield getting tackles for loss on opposing running backs, and he's a huge difference maker for this, uh, for this Titan defense. And for that young man, Schwinghammer, he was one of the tackle leaders in the regular season for these Tartan Titans, and one of the quarterbacks defensively, so to speak, for a Titan team who, over the course of the regular season, only allowed 79 points. Third and nine from the 46. DeVore drops back, looks to the left side, passes complete to Tang. One brought down on a nice tackle across midfield to the Tartan 48-yard line. But that three and out punt, exactly what the Titans needed. Yeah, it is exactly what the Titans needed. But I think if you're Matamidai, you, I think you should go for it. You're on the Tartan side of the field. I know if you hold Tartan to a three and out, you're going to have terrible field position on a punt or something like that. But you're up seven to nothing on the road. It just kind of feels like you get this first down, momentum would continue to build. I don't know. It, it's not a it's not a terrible call to punt it right here. This is fourth and four. I think you could pick it up, though. Quick pass to Tangwall. Because we, what we see in high school football is a lot of defensive backs placed really far off. It'll be Dominic Fetty, one of the leaders for the Zephyrs defensively, with five tackles, two for loss in section play. He'll be the punter. It'll be Dorian Singer back. The flag is thrown. I think it's going to be a delay game here. It'll be exactly that. It'll back up Montamina at five yards. Yep, I think that's what they wanted to do, although I don't really get the letting the play run out. You're trying to pin them back within their own 10, especially for a high school kicker. They don't have the greatest of legs. Well, we saw that on the first punt, two from Tartan to Matamita, where the kick itself only went you look at the math, only went 17 <laughs> yards. Yeah, it was terrible. So not exactly a long punt. But and it's cold out, you know. The ball is a brick. I get why, you know, you can have a terrible punt. That's what I'm saying. Like, you back up five, no matter how great of a punter you are, you just never know. So this time Singer stands at his own 25-yard line with some speed and some space. Still kind of a delay here. Not sure what's going on. They keep looking at the clock. 
We're almost done with the first quarter already, Alex. Well, it's been a very quick game. We, we noticed that the last time, too, that the pace of the game between these two teams was quite impressive. Yeah, they like to run, 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 run. That's uh, That'll keep the clock moving. And so this time they will approach the line. Again, Singer stands at his own 20-yard line. The punter, Dominic Fetty, stands at his own 35 and will have a false start on Matamidi near sideline. It was Steven Runkle, a name that you and I both enjoy calling. Yeah. We jumped just a little bit early. Yeah, I think we coined the term, do the Runkle. Maybe that was me. Uh, nonetheless, another penalty, and you're going to keep giving Tartan a chance to have good field position. They started at the 35 the last time. It's, they'll probably start near there this time. Well, and the important thing to notice, too, John, is that's the third penalty for a false start already. Well, not the third penalty, but the third penalty for five yard, 15 yards total on Matamida in this football game. A concern going forward? That's Fetty. We'll do a rugby style kick. It'll continue to bounce, continue to roll. Singer will watch it roll as the Zephyrs will get to it at the 16 yard line. And that will be number three, Michael Burns, to field it down for Matamida. And Alex, after all the many, conversation. How many, how many penalty yards did they have right there? Well, they had 10 on that. They one. had 10. Where would the ball be placed if that, that ball came inside the, inside the 10 at the yeah, 7? That would be about the 7 yard line, and they would be absolutely pinning down Tartan def or the Tartan offense. I mean, that's those penalties came back to bite you, and now Tartan still, it's not terrible field position, but they're just underneath the 20. Um, I think, I think. Uh, we're going to see Tartan really start to get that offense rolling right here, Alex. 3.18 to go, 7-0 opening quarter. Matamidi leads a trip to the state tournament, and the winner of Mankato West versus Chaska await the winner this time. This time it's Tian Dang getting the handoff out of the backfield. He able to work his way only a yard forward. It for looked like he missed the hole, Alex. If he would have cut that back to the left, I think, you know, here on the near side, it was a wide open middle hole. Let's watch this replay right here. The handoff will go to Dang. Yeah, if he cuts it left, he has about, he's gone. It's a touchdown. He just cut it right back into the defensive lineman. That's a, he'll watch film tomorrow if they win and know that. So that's a play he would like to have back. So it'll be second and nine for Tartan from their own 18 yard line. As a goal, pistol formation. Lockhart, the quarterback, Dang in the backfield. Two receivers near side. The handoff this time goes to Dang. He tries to cut back out to the right side. He breaks through a tackle to the 25, to the 30, to the 40. With speed, Tian Dang out of bounds near the 50-yard line. And a huge gain on second down. Yeah, you know, after the mistake on the first one, it looks like Dang wanted more. There's a penalty on the play, Alex. This one's coming back. So we get a hold here. Again, like we said, Amon Amidai, the offensive line, a topic of conversation, perhaps for Tartan, too, as that takes a 30-yard rush by Tian Dang off the board. Brutal. That is brutal. Now you're pinned back inside your own 10 for a second down at about 19. And Dang just doing that one himself, breaking tackles. As stubborn as that first down run was where he missed the hole, he sure made up for it right there. Unfortunately, the penalty brings that one back. So the ball will be spotted second and I'm trying to do math. Second and 18 from the six yard line. As that holding penalty could prove pro costly. Three penalties on Matamidi already, two on Tartan. And really in a section playoff game, you cannot have those unforced errors. You really can, Alex, especially when you're down back now pinned almost to your own goal line. You have a long ways to go. I mean, if you don't get this first down, you're gonna give Matamida, great field position for the third straight possession. And up to Dang, not much on that one. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, nothing more. Will be third down from the 10-yard line. Yeah, here comes the Dorian Singer pass. They're just going to feed him. He's going to he's going to just run an out route right here, or you know something over the middle, way past the sticks. So again, really for a Tartan team that we expected to do better, considering how they fared so well in that first matchup, really the advantage has been on the side of the Montamina Zephyrs tonight. Yeah, and like we talked about last time, they just didn't have field position. Maybe that was it. I don't know. But I mean, this this Tartan team has been much better overall this season than they sure as heck were on that October 4th meeting, as you see on your screen, 41 to 14. Uh, I mean, Montamina is controlling it right here. And if they get a stop right here, woo, we're going into the second quarter and they're going to be practically on their own side of the field or just past the 50. So third and 17 for Tartan. Lockhart gets a snap. 
Scans over the middle, now rolls off to his left, looking to create an opening. Ball going up for Singer, a nice highlight reel catch. He got it, first down, Tartan. I'm not going to say I called it, Alex. I didn't call the right route, but he definitely got the ball. Of course, they fed him. Why wouldn't you give your big star, number four uh, Minnesota ranked recruit in the 2021 class, a chance to just go up there and get you a first down when your offense is really struggling, pin back near their own goal line? Well, and Dorian Singer is such an offensive threat, too. Last week against St. Paul Central, five receptions, 98 yards, two touchdowns. But that earlier game against Matamidi, we saw him throw for something that was real close to a touchdown, too. Yeah, he, he was absolutely dominant in that game. I mean, and then he came out with an injury and uh, unfortunately he had to come out of the game, but we'll see. Lockhart throwing a ball deep right sideline, incomplete. The Titans want a flag as the ball was looking that time for Jalen Washington on the far sideline. No, that's Dorian Singer rather, excuse me. And the ball incomplete will be second and 10. Yeah, I don't think even if their feet didn't get tangled up that that was a catchable ball, um, nonetheless. Uh, I think that was a great no call by the referee. I know some fans on the opposite side of the field aren't going to be too happy over there, but that was a nice no call. Well, and Dorian Singer, again, the speed that we've seen from him, and like you mentioned, one of the top recruits in the state of Minnesota, certainly a, a individual that a lot of schools will be looking at if they haven't already. Yeah, and Washington, like I said, this team's young, just a sophomore, just this, this kid's good. I mean, once uh, they're going to create a, a lethal one-two punch with Singer and him, you know, on the uh, outskirts of the field playing wide receiver. Single back. Lockhart gives a handoff to Dang. He tries to go to the outside edge, round to the outside. Oh, and I, oh, he almost got him. A nice tackle attempted that time. Matthew Metzel was there first. A couple of Zephyrs come in to help out, and a big loss on second down. I don't know who the outside linebacker was over there, but he absolutely sealed that edge, and Tian Dang had nowhere to go on that one. I mean, that was a great play. The Zephyr defense, you know, I think they must have really watched a lot of film and saw what they did wrong this last time against Tartan because last time they played this game, that's a, that's a huge run. But they set that edge, and that's what you have to do. And that's why, you know, Coach Metzl-led team, they always clean up their mistakes. They don't play with a lot of mistakes, although they do have a couple penalties so far in this game already. Only 35 seconds remaining, opening quarter, third and 15 from the Tartan 25. Lockhart, pistol set, high snap, he's able to pull it down. Shot over the middle, looking for Singer, pass is complete. He broke the tackle, too, wow. and a great play and a nice pass as he gets into Matamirai territory at the 47-yard line. First down for Tartan. Third and 15, and he give up Dorian Singer, but that ball had to be put in the absolute perfect spot. Watch Lockett rifle, rifle this one in here. Boom. Right in between two defenders right there. I mean, the safety was coming, but you know, just past the reach of number 23 there from Matamidi. I mean, just a fantastic play. The defender was Ficadenti. Ficadenti's had a pretty good year on defense, too. Uh, but with Dorian Singer, he's just a freak athlete. And, breaking that tackle. Not only did he get the catch, but he breaks an attack off a nice hit. Well, with the clock hitting zero or zeros and the scoreboard going off here at Tartan High School, we've reached the end of the first quarter, and John, a score that we haven't expected. Matamidi 7, Tartan 0. Yeah, and you know, like I said, you, your Matamidi's defense, and you had them third and in about 16 and third and 15 twice on this drive alone, and you couldn't, you know, Complete that, get your offense the ball back. That's going to be huge. That could be huge because I think Tartan's going to go down and score on this next drive when we come back into the second quarter, Alex. But, yeah, Matamidi playing real well, a lot better than game number one on October 4th. End of the first quarter, Matamidi 7, Tartan 0. This is your home for Zephyr and Titan football on SCC Sports. Hi, I'm Ice-T. As a veteran, I know that for many former servicemen and women, the battle doesn't always end when they come home. Every day, 184 veterans are diagnosed with post-traumatic stress, and sadly, 20 take their own lives. When nothing else helps, professionally trained service dogs can. American Humane, serving the U.S. military for over 100 years, rescues animals in need of forever homes, and trains them to become free life-saving service dogs for our nation's veterans. If you're a veteran or know a veteran struggling with post-traumatic stress or traumatic brain injury, please go to AmericanHumane.org to learn about their Pups for Patriots program. Let's give our veterans a fighting chance. Back everybody, second quarter of play. Hanabidai seven, Tartan zero. A nine-play, 65-yard drive. 
and a four-yard touchdown reception from Tyler Tangwall, the only points so far, and a touchdown reception that really shouldn't have counted, and already an attraction on Tartan that will back them up. And for Matamidi, they had a really good first drive, not so great of a second drive. Tartan the inverse, a, a terrible first drive, but they've really started to put something together here on the second. Yeah, two completions of big third and longs. I mean, that's uh, that's what you got to do. If that, that's what happens. I mean, that's the signs of great offense, even. You know, if you get behind the line of scrimmage and you get in third or second and long to be able to pick that up is big, especially in section play. You're going to need to, you know, they need to put points on the board right here or else you're going to need the ball back. And Matamidi's offense has twice reached the Tartan side of the field. Lockhart getting the snap. He evades the pressure. And they got to him. A number of Matamidi Zephyrs able to reach the quarterback, Brandon Lockhart. I believe Cade Donahue there first. It'll be second down. Yeah, just nothing going for Lockhart there from the kickle of that play, and he tries to cut it up and run it himself. Lockhart's not the fastest guy here, so defense just had to stay in their gaps, and they eventually get him for the sack for a loss of about two yards. Now they're sitting at second and 17. This is a this is like the set of downs that Matamidi needs to hold him right here. Well, again, another look at it here. Good pressure off the edge, but then just collapsing by Matamidi. Yeah, Matamidi's line is playing totally different than they did in game one, Alex. I mean, they were just getting blown off the ball. Second and 17 from the Tartan 46-yard line. High snap for Lockhart. He pulls it down. Little screen pass over the middle to Jalon Washington. Washington trying to cut it back, able to get the outside edge spun down at the Matamidi 46-yard line. It looks like they'll be about third and about eight. Alex here, this is a big one. Third and nine. Well, a real smart decision that time to go to the screen when everybody in the building is expecting a pass to Dorian Singer. <laughs> smart to change the pace. Yeah, but, but the crazy thing was, was I, you rarely see it in high school football, a three-man rush from the Montemita defense. So if anything, they were lucky with that play call. They figured something was up, especially on the passing play. So a lot of guys in the secondary to you know adjust after the screen. Ninth play of a five-minute drive already. Lockhart on third and nine. Pass looking it's up. Got that him. Time. Nice play. Far sideline. And an ankle-saving tackle as that time. An excellent ball to Antoine Burns. Puts the Titans in the red zone. Yeah, Burns absolutely created separation on that. He was wide open. And Lockhart continues to show great touch on all of his passes. I mean, watch this. I feel like he's just grown from the first game of the year. This cold weather, the ball's a brick. The laces are hard. You put that ball in a perfect spot for your wide receiver to get it, get your team down at the six-yard line. That's exactly what Tartan needed. Three huge passes on this drive, Alex, and they're now down. I mean, they're second and 18, third and 15. To now first and goal from the six. Looking Singer near sideline. Ball is up. What a oh catch! Dor no, he says no! Dorian Singer is incensed. He thought he had a touchdown, but they wave it up. You might hear the coaches from above us ludicrous over the call. What do we see here, John? I'm so, I got to see it. I thought he came down with it. Shades of Rashad Bateman last week. Oh no, it does leak out there a little. Just enough. I don't, I, I can't, that, that that yard marker was right in the way, he couldn't see it. That ref had a better angle than we did, but God, that looked like a catch. Well, and again, earlier in the game too, the touchdown that counted in favor of Matamidi, <laughs> you could clearly tell, not a touchdown. <laughs> so perhaps a lack of faith in the official on the near sideline. But either way, second and goal for the Titans, 9.50 remaining. 7 nothing. Matamidi leads. Pitch here near sideline to Dang. Dang, ooh, unable to escape pressure wow. that time. Good group tackling by the Matamidi Zephyrs. Jordan Hall in there. He's one of the leaders in tackles in the playoffs for Matamidi. It'll be third and goal. From the eight-yard line, I mean, that was a loss of two. I mean, that's a play. I mean, it takes too long to develop. That And the defenders were already back there by the time Dang got the ball. He tried to... Make something out of it. I mean, it took a five-yard loss into a two-yard loss, but nonetheless, I mean, that that incompletion is huge. But you know what? They're they're uh, they're going to try to get in, in here if they, even if this goes to fourth down. So it'll be third and goal from the eight. Goal. Two in the backfield. Lockhart's pass. Far sideline to Singer. Singer, he's got it. Touchdown, Tartan. Yeah, make no mistake about that one, Alex. He was getting in the end zone. He's catching it, keeping two hands on the ball. You got to get your playmaker the ball, and that's what they did all drive. Well, a eight-yard touchdown reception by Dorian Singer 
And the Titans are an extra point away from tying this game up. And really, a good play call on that third and goal. Yeah, I mean, it was just watch the blocking out here. They throw this one straight from Locker. And then a nice block. It was really all Singer on that one. He made the move. And that's, what, that's all you have to do, get your playmaker the ball. I mean, like I said, number four 2021 class. He showed you right there why he is. So a 13-play drive of 84 yards that took a huge chunk of time off the clock, almost six minutes worth. And that's exactly how Titan, the Titans will beat you, controlling possession and controlling the flow of the offense. Yeah, I mean, that defense from Matamita has got to be tired out here. So what we need to see from the Matamita offense is a sustained drive to keep that defense nice and fresh. I don't know, actually, you know, it's cold weather, but you want to keep nice and warm. Well, again, we take here a look at two different teams, really, for Matamidi, from the regular season to the playoffs. Regular season, not what we're used to seeing from the Zephyrs, but in the section play, they've done really well. It's just a different ball club, Alex. I mean, they're, you know, they're just, they're not throwing the ball as much, and it looks like they're just relying heavily on Andy and Lee Pramo. I mean, they're also, their defense has really stepped up, only allowing 52.5 yards to opposing rushers. That's absolutely fantastic. Anytime you could do that, you're going to win the game, especially low-scoring games like they played in the first two. I mean, to win 15-12 to 12 last week, showed you right there why that happened. I mean, 52 yards a game, absolutely impressive. And what we've seen already from this Tartan offense is they're struggling to run the ball. Again, 13 plays, 84 yards, 616 off the clock, evens the game up at seven. We didn't say it, but Kierzek on the extra point, it was well good. Could have been good from about 30 yards out. He's five for five in the playoff so far, now six for six. Yeah, we've seen um, Coach Didiker have a lot of faith in him. We, the last time these two teams played, we saw him attempt to over, well over a 40-yard field goal. It might have been 41 or 45, I can't remember. Uh, but he trusts him to kick that field goal. He's got the leg to do it. A little bit of a squib kick, has to go back. Can be fielded that time after a couple of mishandles by the Titans as they'll try to run up as it's the Zephyrs, rather, who have it. Jordan Hall unable to field that ball cleanly, but it'll be first and 10 for Matamidi from about their own 14-yard line. Yeah, it looks like he got out to about the, the 17 or 18 there, Alex. So he definitely turned something into nothing. Let's see the yard line. He picks this ball up. He picked it up at the seven, so he eventually got it out for 11 extra yards. I mean, maybe not. Yeah, excuse me, the 14. You were right there, Alex. My bad. So the Montemino Zephyrs coming off of a three and out. We'll get the ball for the first time here in the second quarter. 8.56 remaining. Score even at seven. First and ten, Montemino from their own 14-yard line. DeVore handoff that time goes to the right side, continuing to churn and burn. And a nice little run there on first down for Jordan Hull as his effort is trying to keep Jonathan Prammel, or Joshua Prammel rather, excuse me, fresh. Yeah, somebody's been hitting the squat rack, you know, yards after contact, absolutely fantastic on that run. It's going to give his team a short second down to complete after a seven yard rush right here. Watch this replay. Just keeps those legs churning, gets a little help from uh, the tight end, giving him a little push in the back. So they'll go eye formation again here, second and three from their own 21-yard line. Trying to draw him offside, unable to do so that time. As Hall got the ball again across the 30, down to the 32. And another excellent run by Jordan Hull. That'll be a first down for the Zephyrs. Yeah, I think Jordan Hull dealt with a slew of injuries this season. We didn't see him in a couple games. Um, but when he's healthy, I mean, this kid can absolutely run the ball, Alex. I mean, Jordan Hall, 5.5 yards per carry this year. He's just dominant. 17 carries, 58 yards, and a touchdown in section play against North St. Paul and Washburn, respectively. And again, really, when we look at those matchups as we go first and 10 here from the Monomedi 31 handoff again. No, a play action that I just been on. No, it was a handoff. It's a, ha a fullback <laughs> handoff there, yes. Yikes, that's not very good at all, but it's a fullback handoff that time, and it's a short gain as the ball went to Tony Newbeck. It'll be second down and seven from 34. Yeah, Newbeck more looks like a wide receiver and tight end, not an ideal fullback, especially when you compare him to Tartan's uh, Christian Hernandez, who's a little bowling ball of a fullback as well. But, you know, like we said, bottom uh, they're a leaner, they're a leaner team. They definitely don't have the size of years past. I mean, a couple years ago, they had TJ Tumbleson at fullback, who was absolutely amazing. And up again goes to Hull. Hull gets back to the 35. Looks like it'll be a game of about 
one. It'll be third down and six from the 35. Yeah, if you're Matamita, you can't really afford to go, you know, to punt the ball after this play. You've got to keep going here. I think I think they should have went for it on that last possession, Alex. I think that's going to come back to bite them. You give Matamita or Tartan Tartan's offense, who was absolutely explosive, a chance to go down and tie the game when you could have, you know, gave them field position, you know, inside their own. 50, I mean, that's not that great. I mean, that's really good, but you could have put your foot on the, on the neck of the Tartan team right there. Third and six with the 35. DeVore fakes the handoff. He's got action. Him. Nice little play that time to Newback. He's got a first down. Oh, it's going to be close, be Alex. Real close to it, as it looks like. We'll see where they spot the ball. I thought he had gained the 40. Looks like he's half a yard short. We'll see. We'll take oh, a it's a first down, Alex. Oh, well, they do say first down. The chains will move, and there will be a first down for Matamina as Tony Newbeck gets into the passing game. Ooh, he was close. He was close. Nice play call right there. Play action. Newbeck kind of leaks out of the backfield. That's what you like to see, you know, a lot of uh, – you see that a lot in the pro game this these days with a lot of, you know, with the with the Shanahan led offenses and the Fleurs. I mean, that's a that's a great play. Use that fullback. Nobody's expecting him to go leak out of the backfield, catch a pass like that. 6.09 remaining, second quarter of play. Matabidi seven, Tartan seven. Pitch here near side, looking for Hull again. Hull gets to the 45, knocks a man over as he gets down to the 48 yard line, and that'll set up. A second and three. Yeah, nice run by Jordan Hall there. Another seven-yard carry, and instead of shying away from contact, he's just going to try to pull you over right here. As he says, hey, Tartan defender, I'm just going to pull you over. Nice job by the Tartan defender holding on uh, to him the best that he could. That was Armani Cozy. Nice tackle right there. And Cozy, the second on the Titans in tackles a week ago against St. Paul Central. And really, John, one of the keys to victory was going to be this running game from Matamita. I will talk about that more after the second and three. Handoff to Hull again. He's upended after a gain of maybe one to the 49-yard line. It'll be second and short from the 39. Was Jordan Hull always on Matamita? Okay. Just reminds me a lot of some Stillwater running backs of last year. Very similar style of play. Uh, but this kid, I mean, look at it. He was down for a loss of about three yards. He turned that into a gain of one to give his team a third and two. I mean, he's going to give you his all, and it's big to have him out there. Him and Prammel can create a nice one-two punch. But with a healthy hull, I think you're you're seeing a nice Matamidi offense here attacking the run. Third and two from their own 49-yard line. Pitch to Hull again. Hull across the 45. Oh, and a nice little play. And Jordan Hull has taken over this drive for Matamini. First and 10 from the Tartan 45-yard line. Yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, I think it, this is four-down territory no matter what for Coach Mentz. I think you know you have to put points on here regardless. I mean, if you're third and short, fourth and short, you can't afford uh, to give Tartan the ball back right here. And you know what? We've seen a lot from the Matamini offense this year, Alex. It was them just... Throwing the ball, and a lot of it was to unopened wide receivers. You tack the run with the run game with, with a healthy Jordan Hall, and that will open up the pass game, and Tang Wall can do the rest from there. Well, one of the question marks, too, Jonathan DeVore. We weren't too impressed with him in the two games, but he's been spectacular tonight. Yeah, we weren't impressed with any of the, the quarterbacks for this Miami Night team. First and 10 from the 45, pitch again to Hull. Hull trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like he lost a yard. Second and 11 upcoming from the Tartan 46. Yeah, it looks like Jacob Wine got away with a huge hole right, a hold right there. But nonetheless, it's going to be a loss of one. It's going to be second and 11 here for Matamida. It was just a slow developing play from the start. It looked like the center quarterback exchange went quicker. The offensive line didn't get off the ball right away. Just a recipe for disaster. Luckily, they only lost one yard. Luckily for Matamida. And this Tartan defense really needs to start stepping up right now. They're getting beat on the trenches. Ten plays, 40 yards so far for Matamida on this drive, a drive that has already wound much of the time off the clock. Five minutes already. DeVore pass over the middle. Ooh, incomplete almost. Wow. Bjorn Sather had a hand on it. Third down. That's a catch you got to make. This is the section championship. You had nine, you had nine games to get the drops out of the way. Watch this. A nice pass from DeVore here. Yeah, I mean, oof, there's nothing else you could say about it. That's a catch you have to make. But, you know, they're young wide receivers. And it, it happens in high school football. And the other thing you've noticed tonight, too, John, no turnovers. Certainly a key to success in any playoff. No, and they're, they're not calling up, you know, weird passing plays that force DeVore to throw the ball into, you know, double, triple coverage. They're throwing it to, they're scheming guys open to them. Third and 11, DeVore with time, throws near sideline, pass incomplete. He was looking for Tangwall, well out of bounds. And so the Zephyrs 
may have to punt here. Yeah, I think they had to, Alex. Now fourth and 11. Brutal. So fourth and 11 from the Tartan 46 yard line. And for a drive that went 40 yards and wound, when we look at the time, wound five minutes and 30 seconds off the clock. That's not how you want your drive to end. That was as close as it could be to a catch there, Alex. That was pretty close uh, on that replay. But yeah, I mean, that drop was huge. I mean, that's the difference between about third and three or four uh, to four or third and 11. I mean, yikes. So back to return the punt again, Dorian Singer. Punt is fine. Ooh, there they go They're fake here. It. They will keep it. And a little shovel pass over the line of scrimmage. He may be close to the first down. The Titans say no. We wait for the official. Where is he going to spot it? Right at the 35-yard line. It looks, looks like there's a tight down on the near sideline, too. It looks short, Alex. The official calls. There's a conversation between officials. We talked about how often Matamidi may throw the fake punt out there. We saw a fake there earlier on their first punt of the game. This time they chose to take it. Just that little dumb pass. We'll wait to see how they choose to rule this. Uh, they already called it. It's target football. Alex. It's, uh, he's just a yard short. Let's watch this play. It took way too long to develop. Yeah, he wasn't. He was never even that close. And so a nice drive by Matamina goes unsuccessful. 12 plays for 40 yards in the fake punt after 5.48 of clock possession. It's a turnover on downs officially as Tyron will take over. First and 10 from their own 36-yard line with 3 8 remaining here. Second quarter of play. It's Tartan 7, Matamina second. Yeah, seven, Junior Lake Kita is down on the ground for Tartan. Tried to come off the field. Wasn't able to make it to the sidelines. He is down. Hopefully he's all right. Not much left remaining here as far as the fall sports calendar goes. Matamidi girls cross country on Saturday. The second will be in St. Olaf and Northfield. And again, you look at the two teams here between the section play, really even, but the Titans, with just that one game against St. Paul Central, really a quality offensive attack. Yeah, I mean, the Titans offense has been good all year. There ain't no doubt about that. But I'm still kind of befuddled about why you call 4th and 11 fake punt and you were afraid you were almost in the same spot on the last drive. You were afraid to go for it on a 4th and 4, and you could have went up, at least put a field goal up on the board, maybe got some points one way or another. I mean, that, that's uh, – I think Coach Metzl knew he – you know, he had to do something because he screwed up on that last drive, which is huge. And now Tartan's got the ball, and they were absolutely dominant on that last drive. I mean, Matamita, I really couldn't stop them through the air, and I think we'll continue to see them attack. 3.08 remaining here in this first half of play, upcoming again on the Matamita schedule. The winter sports soon to start. Girls hockey next Thursday will host White Bear Lake. We'll have that one for you here on SCC. Girls basketball opens up November 22nd at Chisago Lakes, and we'll have an SCC broadcast for their home opener against Eastridge on the 26th of November. Boys hockey opens up that same day against Sartell, and boys basketball starts December the 3rd against Columbia Heights, a team that they have really had a rivalry with, rivalry with for quite some time. That they have, Alex. It's, uh, it's one to watch, so make sure to catch that on SEC TV. Tartan on the other side. Girls hockey will open up at home against Burnsville again next Thursday. Girls basketball against Minneapolis South and the Tigers on the 22nd. Boys hockey at Minneapolis on the 23rd. Their home opener will be December 3rd against Hastings. And boys basketball opens 12-3 at Richfield. And their home opener will be the 6th of December against the Andover Huskies. Meanwhile, first and 10 from the 36th for the Titans. They'll go shotgun formation, singer in motion. They will give the handoff to Singer that time as they faked it to Washington. Not a good play call there. It's a loss of two, second down and 12. Yeah, Nate, great tackle for loss by Wallach right there. Wallach just a sophomore for this Matamidi team. As you can see right here, he just you know, falls it around. Oh, that was actually Metzl, excuse me. Oh, Matthew Metzl, six tackles in two section games really has become quite exemplary on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely developed into quite the nice player. I mean, sometimes they even use him at tight end. I mean, he's a two-way player. And for a small school like Matamita, you kind of have to be that way. 
Second and 12 from the 34 of the Titans. Lockhart dropping back to pass, looking left sideline, has Singer wow. open. Wow, what a catch. He gets past that first defender, oh unable my. to get past the second. On some excellent defense by Edward Green out of the secondary, but well into Monomini territory. You want to talk about trust? You want to talk about trust right here, Alex? Lockhart just threw that one up there, and Singer hit like the sixth gear. He just keep, watch this. I don't know if we follow Singer, but he absolutely just started booking it like a cheetah to come up and catch it up to this ball. Look at that, and then he jumps up and gets it. Nice little gazelle-like play right there. Gets his team down within, inside the red zone. Whoo, that's what you have to do, Alex. I told you they are gonna come out throwing this drive. A 46-yard pass completion to Dorian Singer, the second big play for the Titans tonight through the air. And again, we've seen some quarterback teams for Tartland haven't quite had it, but Brandon Lockhart certainly does. As first and 10 from the 18 pass mm. incomplete. He was looking for a little bit of extracurriculars there as he was looking for TJ Fields. That time it'll be second and 10. Not sure what's going on right there. Coaches are pretty, uh, pretty upset above us. We'll see uh, maybe on the replay, but I don't know. Nonetheless, I mean, Dorian Singer just balling out today. I mean, what a play. Here it comes. I mean, let's watch what happened. I think it might be that they're upset that he just drove him down to the ground. That's weak. That's a football play there, Alex. I mean, your ball's still tipped up in the air. You take him to the ground. That's, uh, that's textbook football. Kyle Oswald on that coverage. It was second and 10 this time. Handoff goes to Washington. Washington Ooh. trying to progress. Big hit as he hit the line. So he gets further down to the 13 yard line and a gain of five. It'll be third and five. I think that was Hona break in there, just laying, you know, filling that gap and just stopping him dead in his tracks. Let's watch this. This is a beautiful play. I thought this, this head could have had end zone written all over it. Hona break just comes in and stops him. I mean, that's a great play for this modern meat eye defense because they absolutely need a stop right here. But this, uh, this Tartan offense could score from you no matter how many yards out they are from the end zone, Alex. The Titans well within field goal range as well for Garrett Kierzek, the senior kicker. As we'll go here, third and five. Lockhart will roll out to the right, pass up in the air, incomplete. As that time, that ball looking for Brandon Olson on the near sideline. Pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth and five from the 13. Yeah, just absolutely great defense by the cornerback right there. Ethan Moss, Loss just coming in. I got to see it. It looked like he made contact right as the ball hit his hands. Let's take a look at this. Oh, yeah, great defensive play there. I don't know, it was a little uh, little blurry, but nonetheless, it looked like it was a boom, boom play. And they're going to kick a field goal here. Nothing's given on a cold night like this, Alex. He's got the leg. So Garrett Kierzek from 30 yards out. Oh, and they'll be early, and that may just give Tartan a first down. Uh, it'll be close. Wow, that would be brutal. They came sprinting off that far sideline. If it, that does give Tartan a first down. I think it does. It'll be four penalties now, those five yards. They may not seem like much, but in a spot like that, you cannot have a penalty like that. Oh, man, I just talked about how Coach Metzl, the team doesn't make mistakes in you know, a couple minutes ago, and that's exactly what happened. And you give an offense like Tartan second life here inside the 10-yard line, I mean, you're going to have to ha do a heck of a job. You have to play your hearts out right here and get this stop because I think they, they could score immediately. Don't be surprised if they just chuck it up to Dorian Singer right here to just go up and get it. So first and goal now from the eight for the Titans, a minute 29 remaining, 7-7, seven, seven, your score. You're from Tartan High School in Oakdale, Minnesota. A beautiful fall night, late fall, shades of winter on the horizon as they'll send Singer in motion from left to right. Two in the backfield, they will go to Singer on the quick screen, screen, the flag comes in as he gains the edge. It's coming it back, looks like it will be short. It was holding regardless. Singer's looking for a touchdown. I agree with you on the call of holding. Wide receiver, the lead wide receiver blocking out on the outside there, absolutely tackled the defender. I mean, unfortunately, this one's coming back, and it's going to be first and goal from the 18. I'll say illegal shift. Illegal shift. Ooh. Metal, that's <laughs> for Tartan. That's better than holding. But yeah. For Mata really, you could have had a hold there. Yeah, watch this play. Let's 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 see. I mean, if we're right. No, that was just a solid block. That was a solid block, and he did get in the end zone on that play. Unfortunately, legal motion is going to negate that. But yeah, it's a lot better than having first and 18. Um, 
to get into the goal line. First and 13, that's not that far. I mean, we've seen them complete second and 15s, third and 18. I mean, they've, they've done a heck of a job tonight. So it'll be first and goal for Tartan here from their, from the Monomini 13 yard line. Got four shots at it, no reason why not. The Zephyr sideline is packed here at Tartan High oh, School. They're going to Singer. They'll roll out to back, the right. Yep, Ball, back end zone fade. So intercepted! He caught up for it. What a play, Ethan lost. He has one already in the sections. He's going to have another, and it will be a touchback officially. Wow. What a play by Ethan Loss. I mean, when you saw Doran Singer line up where he did, I was calling, I almost, you, you were calling the play, and I was like, oh, they're going to throw it. He's going to cut out to the corner end zone. And that's exactly what he did. And Loss read that all the way, stuck with him. And so Singer tried to do all he could to be the defender right here. Watch this. You know, it wasn't even a play action. They just rolled it out, threw it up there. And Loss just comes down with it. It was a beautiful play. And, you know, if you have a, a wide receiver like Dorian Singer, throw it where only he could catch it. But, you know, this is high school football. Quarterbacks aren't, you know. They're not that skilled. I mean, it's tough to just throw the ball on a night like this. So a play that wound about two minutes off, or drive that wound two minutes off the clock. Gives Mata I I left life here. Thanks to Ethan Loss. A minute 13 remaining here, second quarter. Oh, there's a false start, Alex. The whistle does blow. The flags unenthusiastically <laughs> come out from the official. Did you see the, the, the back judge just kind of just, <laughs> he just grabbed it, chucked it on the ground. Uh, yeah, that's brutal, but I think regardless of what happened on that play, the penalty, uh, which I'm talking about, they were just going to run the clock out. Um, they were going to go happy, go into the half happy, tied up, 7-7. Seven to seven. Um, But Tartan gets the ball after half. Well, the last two section interviews, we'll have a conversation with both head coaches of the Titans and the Zephyrs at the half. As we'll wait this first and 15 play. So they'll give it to Prammel again. Prammel met immediately. He may not have gained any. Looks like they'll give him the spot to the 16-yard line. And that will be second and 14 from the 16. Yeah, they're just going to call one more run and get out of here, Alex. Uh, that'll be it. And they'll go into halftime. All tied up here, 7-7 seven to seven in a game uh, that I know me and you talked about. We were really hoping it would be like this and not you know, like the other one. I mean, this is section championship football. Uh, but like like we've talked about, you can't count out a Mata Midi team that's led by Coach Metzl. I mean, he knows how to coach. I mean, in big games especially, he's been to the state tournament. He's been to how many straight section championships. This is a guy who's been there before and he knows what it takes to win. Last play here, second and 14 from the 16 with 30 seconds remaining. So will give the handoff again to Prammel. Prammel creating some space as a couple of Titans are able to get him our money. Kasi back there as well as Cody Engstrom. That should do it. And really for these two teams that have played in the past two section 4-5A finals, it was a one possession game throughout last year. Yep. Two years ago in the Snow Bowl, it was a scoreless game until the fourth quarter. Was last year the Snow Bowl? No, two years two ago. Two years ago. Snow Bowl. Wow. And so, really, for these two teams to be even, looks like they may run one more play. First and 10 from the 30. There's a handoff again to Prammel. Prammel trying to stutter step through. Oh, he oh, got wow. outside to the 40. He may. He should step out of bounds. That's exactly what he does. Clock stops with 2.5 seconds left. And they'll have to take a shot at the end zone here as it'll be first and 10 from the 47-yard line of Bonamidi. Alex, how have we not talked about the snowball yet? That was a game to remember. It was about less than, it was like 15 degrees. We got about three feet of snow that night. The plows were on the field. Uh, you could only see the yard markers. That was a game to remember. Well, John, you and I have called a lot of football games together yeah. here as it'll be timeout taken by the Zephyrs. First timeout taken by either team this half. And again, that snowball was probably one of the, the better games that the two of us have called. Well, together. we were freezing, but it was it was one of the it was a really close game that came down to the end. I think Montemito was down, and they ended up scoring uh, in the fourth quarter there to take the lead. I mean, that was beautiful. But what a job by Pramble just continuing to bulldoze here. But unfortunately, it's a little too late. Uh, this will be the last play. Hard to know what they're going to draw up right here. Some crazy trick play. But I still think if there's one takeaway in the first half, it was not going for it inside Tartan territory for this Matamidi squad. Well, again, you take a look there at the Suburban Grace standings. Matamidi at two and six overall, really a disappointing regular season for Matamidi. And they didn't look like the times that we saw them, they didn't look like a Dave Metzl coach team. And the Tartan Titans, eight and zero with the conference championship. They looked a lot better, but so far, you'd be hard pressed to decide which team is better tonight. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, you're just not seeing what makes 
Tartan click, I mean, but, you know, Tartan's really controlled this game after that touchdown. They just haven't been able to put the ball in the end zone. I mean, that, that interception was absolutely brutal, and it was a beautiful catch. So first and 10 from the 47 on the Hail Mary. Tartan in their prevent defense. DeVore puts the ball up, Ooh. looking middle of the field. He may have something. He's got it, <laughs> but the time will expire as he's thrown down with authority on a nice pass that time by Jonathan DeVore. And while it may not have resulted in points, you certainly think Matamina is going to hang in this one into the second half. Yeah, I think they will, Alex. I think this is a team that's playing like they deserve to be here. And you know what they have. They won their section games. They won the games that mattered. And they're all tied up here on the road, just down 94. I mean, this is a team that came here to play. And Tartan is not playing the football we've seen from them all year. I mean, this is a squad that, you know, they've absolutely dominated. I mean, the closest game they played was it nine? Was it either an eight or nine point game? Nine points was the closest the team got to them this year in the regular season. I mean, this is a squad that's absolutely dominant. And if you look at section play, nobody was close to them either. I mean, they won 35 to nothing and 18 to zero. I mean, this is a team that's dominated every game. And they didn't look like that in the first half. It's a close one. It was Ethan Loss on that last reception. Dorian Singer on the tackle. Tartan will receive the ball to start the second half. It was an opening drive touchdown by Matamidai by Tyler Tangwall. Then three drives later, Tartan got on the scoreboard with a eight yard reception by Dorian Singer. That's how we have reached our score at the half, seven to seven. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. Please continue to stick around for the interviews with both head coaches. This is your home for Zephyr and Titan football on SEC Sports. You don't know what I'm going through. Why don't you ever talk to us? What is going on with you? I don't know, just so down. I just don't care about anything anymore. Depression was hard on me and my family, but it turns out I always had the strength to work my way back. I just needed someone to show me the first step so I could be me again. I'm joined now by Tartan's head coach, Matt Dieter, coach. Tartan's season has been loaded with milestones. First eight no season ever. Congratulations on that, by the way. Uh, huge point totals, number one seed in sections, ranked by the Associated Press for almost uh, the entire season. What would you say has been the difference maker that has your team standing out this year? Um, well, as always, it's the kids. I mean, you can do a lot as a coach to lay out a pathway for kids to be successful in anything, but they're the ones that have to buy in and, and like we say, walk the, the walk. Um, they've done it since the beginning of the summer, and really this goes back to the end of last year, and we kind of laid out uh, the expectations and opportunities that they would have, and it's really rewarding to see them take full advantage of them. And your offense has been solid all season, posting an average of 37 points a game, but the defense has also made a name for itself, giving up only nine points a game. I know it's got to be hard as a coach to choose between the two, but uh, which side of the ball has been more impressive in your eye on the sidelines? Uh, it, it's a good problem to have. They're both amazing. And, yeah, we, we try not to talk about it in those terms a lot because <clears throat> you can start to get into a situation where you're dividing your team into two different groups. And um, I would just say they're, they're both extremely impressive. Uh, both have their challenges. I mean, if on the defensive side of the ball, you've got to change um, an opponent's game plan every different week and try to stop what they're doing. Um, and on offense, you're trying to look at what the, the other side's doing and um, try to exploit that as much as you can. And so both take uh, great effort in terms of our kids and their execution, and both are certainly things to be proud of so far. So this Friday, you take on Mata Midai for the section title. This is the third year in a row of this matchup in this specific game. Obviously, you're no stranger to them or the section final for that matter. So how do you approach this game differently from the others? Well, obviously, the kids have been told it's it's for all the marbles. It's a section uh, final. But we've been approaching it really uh, with this kind of mindset going back uh, about three weeks and just kind of prepping for this and, um, you know, telling the kids that, hey, this is the the end of the road. If you don't take care of business, uh, Matamidai is going to come in and, and give everything they've got. You know, it's it's the end of your season. And how do you want it to end? In the past, it's been Matamidai with the top seed and hosting the championship game. This year, the script has flipped a little bit, and it's Tartan hosting. How important will that home field advantage be as you look to repeat as section champs? Well, it is nice, but we're not too far away, so it's not like they're going to travel across country and, and you know stay overnight or something like that. But, you know, yes, it's definitely uh, rewarding to have home field advantage and, and be able to, to, to do some of the 
nicer things that you do on a home game versus getting on a bus and traveling over to somebody's place regardless of how close or far away it is. But yes, we're looking forward to it. And when you played Matamidi earlier in the season, it was early fall, so naturally it was a bit warmer than it is now. And now that things are cooling down, and it certainly will on Friday, does that change up your game plan at all? Um, not very much. I mean, we've built our both of our systems with this idea in mind that, you know, in Minnesota in, in, in November, the weather gets cold. And you mentioned the two games we played before. Um, the first one was, you know, pretty special in the sense that they had to shovel the field uh, right before kickoff and actually delayed it. Um, you know, and that wasn't, you know, an air raid type affair. It was, a, you know, a close fought, hard won game. Um, for Matamidi and then last year you know it it wasn't snowy but it was certainly wasn't um, September or early October and definitely a cold hard-fought battle and that's what you expect when you get to a a game of this magnitude against two good teams and two good programs. Last question last time around earlier in this season your team handled Matamidi very well what do they need to do in order to come out and have a repeat performance on Friday? forget about the first performance and that's really what we've been talking about I mean uh, you, there's a, a lot of different examples that you can look at of teams beating one team um, either close or handily uh, the first go around and then counting on that same thing to happen so what we're talking about you know all week and working on uh, is trying to make sure that you know yeah that's nice but that's in the past and you know it's a new game and they're going to come um, with a different mindset because it's a championship game and and we need to come with the same and approach it you know like nothing happened the first time and we're going to go execute and do our best and um, have some fun doing it all right thank you very much coach i appreciate it matamida i didn't quite have the regular season that you guys were hoping for but have turned things around quite nicely in section play what's been the key to success for you here in the postseason you know what, uh, we've just kind of stuck with what we're doing and, and we got some kids with some experience and just trying to clean up um, more so from our standpoint, clean things up a little bit on the offensive side um, and then just securing things on the defensive side. And Matamidi versus Tartan in the section final is a familiar narrative, a uh, familiar opponent. How do you approach this game differently from previous matchups with the Titans? You know what, it, for us, it doesn't matter if it's in the section finals or if it's during the regular season. It's going to be a battle with Tartan. Um, they're well coached. They have athletes there. They're tough. Uh, so it's going to be a matter of just going out and um, trying to play a, uh, a clean game. Now, through this postseason, your defense has stood out, only giving up 18 points total in the two games, 12 points to a Washburn team that was averaging 32 points a game. Tartan has a few weapons as well and put up a lot of points this season. So how do you shut them down like you did Washburn? Yeah, that's a good question. (laughs) Um, You know what, they do have some athletes and uh, they're explosive uh, and you can never fall asleep uh, with with any of their guys. Um, Our biggest thing, hopefully, you know, a big part is going to be the turnover battle. And we want to force them to, to drive the ball 80 yards as opposed to giving them uh, any short fields. Uh, and then also, you know what, we just got to go out and we got to execute. You know, go out and execute. And our defense has been uh, getting better and better. And um, you know what, they, they got to go out and, and play the game they know they can play. You mentioned you've got some experience on the team, but a lot of your guys have uh, been new starters this year, and a lot of them haven't seen a section final before. So how do you prepare them for this game that carries a bit more weight than any of the ones before it? You know what, it, it does carry a bit more weight, but but our focus is it's, uh, you know, the same as last week. It's the same as the week before. It's just a, it's another game uh, that we need to go out, uh, and our focus is on us uh, and how we can go out and prepare, how we can go out and play. Uh, and we feel like if, if we can go out and play the game that we know we can, um, it, it's going to be a good game out there. And lastly, as we just touched on your team having quite a few new faces, who do you look to as someone who will step up as a leader for you in the section final? You know what? We, we need everybody to step up um, and, and to go out and play um, the way they can. And so, so there isn't any one person or, or two, uh, two kids. It's uh, we need all 11 on defense. We need all 11 on offense. We need our special teams, um, our sidelines. We need to have everybody uh, involved. All righty. Thank you very much, Coach. I appreciate it. Sounds good. Thank you. At the 
you started the second half here, the score, bottom eight, ice seven, tartan seven. Alongside John Miller, I am Alex West. Now we hope you enjoyed the interviews that our SEC sports producer, David Schuyler, did, as I finally said his name right, with the two head coaches, Matt Didiker and Dave Metzel. And certainly one of the two coaches will be interviewed by John following the game. And really, John, the story of this game, what on earth happened compared to that regular season matchup? I don't know, Alex. I mean, I, I really, um, I think Matabita, you know, they got a, a healthy Jordan Hall back, and he's playing really well, and they got that one-two punch with him um, in Prammel, and then, you know, they, they finally have just one quarterback instead of rotating him around. DeVore is playing well. I mean, he threw that 50-yard bomb before the end of the half. I know nothing came of it, you know, for as it was just a Hail Mary, but he's been playing well. Um, and one thing that we saw was – Tartans, the last time these two teams played on October 4th, you know, practically a month ago, was the offensive line. I mean, the battle of the trenches, Tartan was just dominating on offense and defense. And what we're seeing from Matamita is they're not getting pushed around today at all. I mean, they're playing very well. Uh, the size difference, you could just see it on the field, but these guys are getting leverage. And I think, you know, Coach Menzel just broke down what happened, how they lost, and here we go. Um, Here's the touchdown. Well, the opening score of the game, Jonathan DeVore found Taylor or Tyler Tangwall. Admittedly, he shouldn't have, <laughs> but the touchdown stands, and that gave the Zephyrs the early 7 to nothing lead. And then on the second drive of the half for Tartan, it's Dorian Singer, Nate Yard, touchdown reception as he gained the outside edge. And that is how the two teams have hit the scoreboard tonight, both through the air. And really, we're going to see more of the same, more on the ground, I think, in the second half. Yeah, I mean, like we said before the game, I think the only way Matamita could really have a chance in this game is if they really controlled the time of possession. I mean, and they're doing exactly that. I mean, Matamita is getting some big runs on the ground, um, and they're playing very well. I mean, Tartan uh, just shot themselves in the foot. They had the interception in the red zone, uh, throwing it up for a jump ball between them and Singer. I mean, Singer is one of the best players in or high school football right now. I mean, it's, it'll be interesting to see where he goes for college, but... I mean, it was a pass that, you know, I think Lockhart would like to have back. He's played well all year, all game. I mean, this kid, I think we've continued to see him develop in front of our eyes. I mean, he, a month ago, he was making a lot of force passes to singers. He's putting some dimes out there today, some absolutely beautiful passes that this kid's going to continue to grow as he's just a junior Alex, and I think these two teams are going to continue to play, and I think we're going to see it's going to be either a three-point or a touchdown game between one of these two, and it's going to be, I think, it's going to come down to field position. We took a glance at Dave, uh, head coach Dave Metzel, whose Manas Mirai Zephyrs have reached four, six consecutive Section 4-5-A finals. Again, you see there the, uh, the junior quarterback, Brandon Lockhart. But really for Manas Mirai, six consecutive section finals. They've won three of the previous five. What did they have to do in the second half to make it 4-6? Like I said, they have to continue to control time of possession. Uh, I think a lot of it, not only time of possession, but you know, it's, it's where they start out on each drive. I mean, we saw Matamita have great field position in the first half. They had a couple starts at the 35 in. Uh, and yeah, we'll see what it is. But I mean, if Tartan comes out and they start going, getting hot, the offense gets hot right out of the gate, this could be a long second half for Matamita. Well, the Titans will receive the opening kickoff of this second half. Jalen Washington is back in the near side, and it's Dorian Singer who is out on the far side. It's back for the Titans, and wisely, the Zephyrs will choose to kick it away from them. They will watch it go out of bounds. The flag will fly. It'll be first and 10 for Titan from their own 35. And another flag comes in late, too, from the back. Judge well out of the play. Wow, you were, you were about to start at the 35. It looks like number 18 for Tartan there. Bertelson is going to get called for an unsportsmanlike conduct, and that's going to set his team back 15 yards. So it's an illegal kick out of bounds for Manamida, and then the unsportsmanlike conduct for Tartan. Wow, that's, that's brutal. I mean, you know, this Tartan offense, I mean, it's not going to impede what they do on this drive, but it's the difference between starting out at the 35 and starting out just as, like, a normal 20-yard kick. I mean, Matamita shot themselves in the foot. I mean, that's the second ball that could have went out of bounds for them on the kick, except Tartan tried to recover it the first time. Well, the official the officiating crew here will take the ball back as after the unsportsmanlike conduct will be first and 10 for Tartan as the ball spun at their own 22-yard line, not the field position that you could have had, though. Must have been a spot foul. So Bertelson kind of wondered what he did, but I mean, 
Oh, no, we don't have the replay there. Of course, so much of high school sports, too, is the, the trash talking that sometimes happens between rival school, schools in Montemita and Tartan. It certainly has become that, especially on the football side. So perhaps something could have been said as well. Although you would hope that in a section final game, that wouldn't be something that would be a penalty by any means. Sometimes it's just foul language. So first and 10, hand off to Dang. He hits the hole immediately, just like they had in the first half. The Zephyrs get back and maintain that offensive attack on the ground for the Titans. It just hasn't done anything. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something I forgot to highlight after halftime when you asked me one of the keys to the second half was for Montemidae to get uh, four out of six back to the state tournament four or six times. I mean, they've been stuffing the run. I mean, Tien Ding's a heck of a running back. I mean, if you look at it, this kid has been dominant as well as T.J. Fields, Jalen Washington, whoever they put back there running back has had success. Not today, Alex. The only two losses that they've had in their previous five was to North St. Paul in 2015 and then to Tartan last year. So two teams in the same school district as Lockhart gives the handoff again as he's trying to get through his dang. He gets to the 25 before a group of Zephyrs are able to tackle him, bring him down. It will be third and about seven from the 25. Yeah, I mean, just nice job. I mean, it looked like Dang was about to get hit in the backfield for another loss, but he somehow made, made that into a successful run. It's second and er, third and eight here, I think. We'll see. It'll be about third and eight. Yeah, look at that. It looked like number 55 from Matamira was back there, and he almost had him. That was he Hemelgar. On the last drive in the first half for Tartan ended up in a interception as it was Ethan Loss who picked off Lockhart looking for Singer in the back corner of the end zone. And now Singer himself moving from motion from right to left to look for Singer. Pass over the middle is complete. And a nice play there on that little slant route as it's a nice reception there that time as it goes to Joe Kearney. And it'll be a first down for the Titans. Yeah, Kearney, six foot three, 206 pounds. I mean, this kid uh, can do, this kid is just massive. I mean, it looked like they were gonna go to Dorian Singer. Nope, Kearney's wide open there in the middle of the field. Nice job by Lockhart, not forcing something to a throw that wasn't there to Singer, taking the easy wide open slant to Kearney. So first down for the Titans, has them first and 10 from their own 37 yard line. 10.07 remaining here, third quarter. Seven to seven, your score. The winner of this one will go on to play Chaska or Mankato West in the section in the state tournament. Next week, as the hand off to Washington, he's stuffed in the backfield. He got back to the original line of scrimmage. And that'll be second and 10 from the 37. Whoever's trying to block Hemelgarn is just getting destroyed. I mean, Hemelgarn's just, that's like the third straight play, running play, that he's just been in the backfield. Watch this. Hemelgarn just pushes the guard away, and he absolutely just comes back there deep in the backfield for about a three yard or two yard loss there. Well, and on the side of the Line of scrimmage, we thought that the Tartan defensive line was going to have a better day than the Matamidi, but really, the Zephyrs have been all over this offensive line for the Titans. This is a totally different story from the October 4th game. Pitch to Washington here on the near sideline. He gains the 40 spins out of pressure and it falls down to the 45 yard line, so that will set up a third and about one and a half from the 45. A nice run there. And for Tartan, watch the blocking up front. Just finds the hole and he hits it on the pitch. That score at the half two, Chaska up over Mankato West. And for the Chaska, number three overall in the state in the QRF rankings by which all the sections in 5AA, or 5A rather, were seated. Tartan ranked at number five according to QRF. Number four, Rogers has been eliminated in the playoffs. So Tartan right now the fourth best team in the state according to that metric. As it'll be third and two from the 45. The guy formation flag and a delay of game on the Titans. And they back up five. Wow, it went from being third and two to third and seven. But like I said before, down and distance means little to this Tartan team. I mean, they could pick up any amount of yards at any time. I mean, maybe not like third and 30 or something like that, but you get the drift. They've completed almost everything from inside third and 20 in today's game. I mean, Tartan's, or Matamidai's defense does have a lot of trouble on third down tonight. Well, there's almost a belief, too. Again, you see there the Class 5A rankings. Every team in action tonight in Class 5A as it's Section 2 against Section 4 in the first round of the state tournament before they move to the right lights of U.S. Bank Stadium in downtown Minneapolis. So 
come back here third and seven from the 40. As they'll send Washington in motion left to right. High snap to Lockhart. Lockhart will keep it himself to the 40, trying to escape pressure. And I don't know why you call a quarterback keeper on third and seven. Yeah, I mean, you got Dorian Singer, and I think that's probably what Coach Didaker was thinking, was that they would really try to shut down the pass game. I mean, it was an obvious passing guy. But Lockhart is not the fastest guy. We've yet to see him get any positive yardage, either trying to escape sacks or just rushing the ball in general. It's been a tough go for him. I mean, that was just great plays by the Matamidae defense, and now they're going to force a punt. And it looks like uh, Wisner is going to be back to return this one. So the punt that time. Oh, that's a boomer. Have to be fair, caught by Wisner at the 31-yard line. And so a drive that ends, again, winds four and a half minutes off the clock, but ends in a punt. And the Monomenai Zephyrs will take over for the first time in the second half. Alex, this is a ball game. This is a, this is a fun one. Let's see if uh, Monomenai, who's going to win? I, it's, it could come down to something as little as, you know, a penalty, a turnover. Something's going to swing the game one way or another. Uh, but we could very well see this game go into the fourth quarter, 7-7. Seven to seven with the way these two defenses have been playing. Well, if you're the Monomini Zephyrs, John, how do you look into the last drive before the end of the half where, yes, it was prevent defense, but you were slicing and dicing through this stout tartan defense? Yeah, they were just getting a lot of yards on the ground uh, with Evan Hall. DeVore's pass that time is complete onto the far side to the receiver, Stephen Runkle. First time his name has been heard on a completion tonight. It'll be second down and about six. Yeah, Jordan, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, uh, you know, they just need to not try to do too much. I mean, don't go. That's what we saw the problem with them in the first half of the year, you know, throughout the year. It seemed like they just kept trying to force the ball down the field, make passing with a passing game that wasn't there. I mean, I know Tang is a nice wide receiver, but he's not a star. He's a guy that's going to get, you know, nice possession catches here and there, and that's your number one wide receiver. Zephyrs will cram the line. They do not do anything with that, though, as it's Prammel who is able to get out to the 40-yard line. Seems to be yards short there. That's going to be third and one. Uh, I, was, I would expect something right up the gut. I mean, Tartans had trouble stopping these guys uh, on the ground today. I, mean, we'll, uh, I don't know, and I, I think this could be four down territory already. Uh, you only need one yard, and your, your running game has been successful almost all night. So third and one for Matamidi from their own 40-yard line, 6-20 in Cali. In his third quarter of play, 7-7 seven to seven the score. As will go eye formation again. DeVore still the quarterback, has been He's awesome sneak tonight. It right here. He's huge. They almost drew him offside again. The handoff that time to Newbeck. He's well ahead of the line to gain. It'll be first down for Matamidi. Nice call right there. Just handing that one off to Newbeck. He has got that by about a good two yards, it almost seems like. So a nice game there. And they're going to continue to just, they're going to grind. This is a Matamidi team. This is what we've seen from them for year, from years past. I mean, they've had some stud running backs who have been super quick. And that's what they've been lacking this year. Uh, but Jordan Hall and Pramel are two nice running backs that if you get going and continue to you know, push up front, uh, they're going to have success. So first and ten for Matami and I from their own 42-yard line. So go two in the backfield. The eye formation again, one receiver near side, one far. As DeVore getting the snap, throws here near side, pass is complete. Oh, wow, oh, look at that! Joshua Bramble, <laughs> what a play! He's able to spin out of a couple of tackles that down to the 22. We haven't seen that since Randy Moss. That was a, a Statue of Liberty play right there, Alex. That's not something that I've seen since Boise State in the Fiesta Bowl like 14 years ago against Oklahoma. Don't ask me how I remember that. Um, <laughs> that helped them win the game. Uh, but that was an absolutely amazing play. Watch this, this was a design, because he had Pramel on the leak out. He knew he wasn't gonna go to him. He throws out to Tangwall, and Tangwall just easily pitches it uh, out to Pramel. Pramel does the rest to get his team inside the 25. That was that was all designed, because I was wondering why he didn't throw it to Pramel, because Pramel was wide open leading out of the backfield. I think whether or not they called that play, I think Pramel would have got that many yards regardless. Well, a gutsy play results in a handoff here on first down and 10 from the 23. He's able to get back of a couple yards. Looks like he got one on it. It'll be second and nine from the Tartan 22-yard line. And if you're Tartan, how do you bounce back from a trick play like that working so well against you? You just keep playing the way you've been playing, Alex. I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about giving up the big gainer. Now you just have to get down, bear down, and uh, do what you just did on that last play. You can stop him for about a one-yard run. That, that play means nothing. you got to forget about it. 
but that was a heck of a play design. I mean, it was a it was a heck of a play, and that's what you have, that's what you see in games like this. Whoever has the gutsiest call sometimes, you know, gets the gold. So second and nine from the Tartan 22-yard line. Hannah again. It's Prammel, Prammel, or not Prammel, rather Newbeck as he escapes into the secondary, and a huge gain on second down as it'll be first and goal from the eight for the Matamidi Zephyrs. What is going on, Alex? Newbeck's in on it, getting getting the gritty yards right here. He just kept those legs churning. I mean, he's a giant, giant fullback. He looks like I said, he more looks like the body of a of a, a tight end or a wide receiver hybrid kind of guy. And they got him playing fullback. So first and goal from the seven officially. I formation again. One receiver each side. And off to Prammel. Prammel slips through a tackle. He won't quite get there, though, as a couple of Titans were able to save that. Dorian Singer first on the tackle, second and goal. Yeah, Prammel, great job for yards after contact. It really looked like he was going to be put down right there, and he said, nope. The defense back, watch this. It looked like he was going to hit in the backfield. Defender tries to arm tackle. That was number 33, Kenny Jordan right there. Tried to arm tackle Prammel, and that's not going to get her done. Now they're at second and three, three yards to go <laughs> from putting points on the board. This is uh, this is touchdown or bust for Mount Amidi. They're going to they're gonna use all four downs here. Second and goal. They load the offensive line, two in the backfield. Newbeck and Prammel. And off to Paramel. It's a touchdown. It is into the end zone, thrown down. The point still goes forward. And the Mount Amidi is up. This is for the first time in the first half. We need to save here on the second down in 13-7. What a drive from Mount Amidi right there. They able to put seven points up on the board in an absolutely great defensive stand. And it all started with that last defensive stand when it was third and two for Tartan. And then they had the illegal motion. And that put them back five yards into third and long. And they weren't able to complete it. And then, you know, Matamidi with the great Statue of Liberty play. I mean, that's going to be something everybody's right about. I know we got a Pioneer Press writer right here. I'm sure he's typing it up as we speak about the Statue of Liberty play. Uh, it was just an absolutely gorgeous call. I mean, sometimes it's about the coach who's, who's willing to be the most daring in games like this. Uh, you see that a lot in conference games. Coaches are, you know, they'll, they'll go to the well and try to find something that catches the defense off guard, and that caught the defense off guard. But regardless, I still thought Prammel would have been wide open for that many yards coming out of the backfield. So Three-yard rushing touchdown for Prammel caps off a very nice eight-yard, 69-yard drive for four minutes, one second off the clock. And really, we've said it before a couple of times tonight. We said it on Saturday, too, when they beat Washburn. But you cannot count, count out a Monomedi coach football team in November. No, you can't. Coach Metzl is, you know, that's why this guy has had such a successful program. Uh, this is one of the least successful teams he's ever had. But guess what? It doesn't matter if you make it to state. That's a successful season. I think it already is to make it to the section championship after going two and six. I told you that this, uh, this team is just playing well. Watch this. It still looked like Prammel was leaked out here, and then he runs the Statue of Liberty. I thought if they would have hit him coming out of the back, but maybe it held that defender that tackled Tangwall for just that long instead of tackling him, but that was a gain of about 60 yards right there. 55. I know that there's a contest for the best play of the week. That one certainly has to be in consideration as the kickoff here this time will be fielded by the Titans as they do a great job of escaping pressure, yeah, trying to roll back to the outside. He got to the 35 on the return as that was Kenny Jordan, the running back linebacker, six feet tall, 220, real big kid. As he gets the ball to the 35, it'll be first and 10 for Tartan from their own 35. I really thought Tartan got the clip on this one, and they did. <laughs> the ref was looking right at it too. I was really surprised that that wasn't called. And that would have put them back another 15 yards. So for Tartan, their first drive here of the second half didn't go very well. What do they have to do here on this second? They just got to continue to do what they've been doing. I mean, they haven't been able to get the run game going, and I think they just, Singer, well, why wouldn't you use it? I don't even know if he's on the field. Right now. He is, he's on the near side. So they'll go first and 10 from the 36 yard line. They send Singer in motion from right to left. Hand off this time to Tian Dang, but again, the defense of the Zephyrs gets back and takes him for a loss of about three. Like I said, Alex, I'm, I'm completely shocked with the way this Matamidi front seven is playing on defense. I mean, they were pushed around on October 4th. What a difference a month makes in a football team, especially this Matamidi squad. I mean, they're, they're, they're playing like they belong, and they, they're up 14 to seven, and I think Tartan might have thought they were just going to breeze on by in this one, and that uh, that says a lot. 
248 remaining here. Third quarter, Monomedi 14, Tartan 7. Second and 13, Lockhart getting the snap. Has plenty of time to run. Takes a ball deep for Singer. He gets the catch. He's got daylight. 10 5, touchdown, Tartan. Wow. I told you, Alex, what do you do? You can't run the ball, just keep attacking Singer. And the number four player in the state, 2021 class. Next year, you could easily jump up to the top three, top two. Um, but wow, uh, it really looked like <sighs> number 15 from Matamidi played that ball about as bad as he could. Ethan Loss, who had the interception earlier today. If we watch this through the air, Loss just got burned. I mean, he tripped over his own feet. And Singer just has an easy catch after that because it looked like Loss had him played perfectly. And I don't think he expected the ball to come to Dorian Singer. And then once he saw Singer just keep running, he was like, oh, no, I think I kind of stopped. Kind of, oh, crap, in my head. Is that what it's kind of looked like? Extra point is up, and it is good. And after a two-play drive of 67 yards, it went 50 seconds. Dorian Singer, his second of the night, a 67-yard touchdown reception. Evens the game up at 14. Here with 2.33 remaining in this second half. You got a playmaker, playmaker like that, you got to target him. And uh, the only downside of that for Tartan, it's a great play. You got the game tied up 14-14, but your defense just came off, you know, a couple minute drive. They might still be tired. Again, other scores in Class 5A tonight. Robbinsdale Cooper at Spring Lake Park and over at Coon Rapids. Mankato West at Chaska. Matamidi here at Tartan. Elk River at Armstrong. Moorhead at Bemidji. Rochester Century at Owatonna and Apple Valley at St. Thomas Academy. Those are your Class 5A finals as every section game. There's one tomorrow, I think. Every section in the state of Minnesota wraps up their play tonight. And again, you see there the notable games of interest. South St. Paul, Simley in the 3-4-A. Simley, real good team. St. Paul with the pedigree of success over time. Again, Apple Valley, St. Thomas Academy in 3-5-A. SMB, Benilde, St. Margaret's, two very private schools, but two very good programs. And Mankato, Chaska, West, and Chaska the opponent of either the Zephyrs or the Titans in the opening round of the state tournament. Yeah, I mean, a lot of great football being played tonight, and that's why we're in you know, high school football playoffs, Alex. And Simley had a great year, too. They went 4-1 and one in the Suburban Gray, 7-1 and one overall. And they're playing against, you know, teams that are in 5A. And so, you know, they're playing 4A ball. They could easily make it to the championship or the state championship tonight for it. I mean, they're, they're an impressive squad. A shout-out to Simley public address announcer Brian Sweeney, my partner with the Minnesota Vixen games in the spring and summer. Hope you're doing well, Brian as the kickoff can be fielded this time by Hull Hull, Hull with a head of steam. Oh, and what a great tackle that time by the Titans as getting to him there. Brock Bertelson brings him down. First and 10 for Matamidi upcoming. I don't think I said he's got a hole. I think I said he's got a hole because Hull is running the ball. Um, but he definitely, that's a nice little return there. Get your team down at the 27-yard line for first and 10. And Matamidi has just got to continue to do what's made them successful, run the ball. And then throw it, throw it when the time's opportune. But you know they're they're grinding down this Tartan team. Their last drive resulted in a three-yard rushing touchdown by Joshua Prammel, an eight-yard eight plays of 69 yards. We'll see how they're able to respond to it again. As Devore under center, eye formation, one receiver near side is Tangwall, far side, looks to be Bjorn Sather. As a handoff that time goes to the big man, the fullback is up the middle, goes Tony Newbeck. And he's got a big gain on first down as the ball can be spotted. Looks like they'll spot it right at the 34. Yeah, Newbeck, nice. Just he got those feet going, and he wasn't going to go down. He gets the first down run. And you know, like I said, we're going to see Matamidi continue. I mean, that's what we didn't see against Tartan. The last time these two teams played, they were just pass, 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 and it didn't make any sense. So they'll approach the line again, second and three from the 34. Just under two minutes remaining here, third quarter of play. All right, formation. The pitch to Prammel, trying to get back to the near side. Has the 40. Oh, he steps over a man, but he got just enough of the foot as he'll be down at the 47-yard line and a first down for Matamidi. Yeah, gain of 13 there for Matamidi. A nice little run. Got those feet going, and he hit the hole. He cut this one up. His nice vision there by Prammel. Nice lead block by Newbeck, and as well as the offensive lineman coming up the field. And if he wasn't tripped up, he's got about five or six more yards in him. Nonetheless, it's about a meet I continues to just chunk after chunk after chunk yards. I mean, that's that's going to be uh, that's going to be huge. They could take this into the fourth quarter, Alex. DeVore under center again. They'll pitch to Prammel again as he gets to the 45. Hole. He's got a real big hole. Tries to get over Dorian Singer. 
but the senior brings him down as he gets across to the 39 yard line and a nice gain that time of 14 first and 10 again I love singer throwing his body out there to save that play but uh, it was a really weird kind of way to tackle to just throw your whole whole body out there to stop him he didn't even uh, try to wrap up just like I'm gonna <laughs> hope to God my shoulder you know hits him right in the knees so Matamita again working here. They've quickly worked their way into Tartan territory as they'll have first and 10 from the Titan 39 yard line. With a minute eight and counting here in this third quarter. High formation again, two receivers out to the far side. Newbeck and Prammel, the running core. As the handoff that time goes to Prammel. Prammel hit quickly, but he's able to fall forward after another nice gain. He gets about four on that one to the 35. It'll be second and six. I, I mean, like I said, the downside to that quick touchdown is that your defense is on, you know, the field for quite a long time on the last drive. I know they had the big statue of liberty play that took huge chunk of yards, but really had a bunch of runs after that that took a lot of time off the clock. And now they're just going right back to it. I mean, this offensive line is fresh, and they're, uh, they're hitting. Second and six from the 35. They'll send a man in motion from left to right. It's Metzel to the backfield. DeVore, and off that time again, goes to Newbeck. Newbeck to the 30, trying to get out to the outside edge. He pushed out of bounds at the 20. And the clock stops with 16.2 remaining. Another first down after a gain of about 15. Gives them first and 10 again. I'm going to wait for that replay to come up before I analyze that play, because let's let's count how many guys Tartan had in the box. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys in the box. They had one safety deep and two cornerbacks playing on the outside. And they can't stop the run. I mean, that's that's just brutal. I don't know what you, what else you can call on the defense if you guys just aren't filling the gaps and stopping them. So first and ten from the 19 after the 16-yard rush by Tony Newbeck. Yep, eight guys in the box once again. So they'll pitch to Prammel off to the right side as he tries to get back forward. A couple of Titans are able to bring him down. Ball will be spotted at the 15 after a gain of four. And that should just about do it here as we'll have second and six from the 15 on the other side of the third quarter break. And John, we're in for a fantastic finish. It's a well. ball game, Alex. This is one of the funner games. I feel like, you know, a lot of times we call it a blowout like we did. Like I keep talking about October 4th, 41 to 14. It's 14 to 14 right now. 12 minutes left to play. Who's going to come out on top? It's going to be great. So tied at 14, we'll head to the start of the fourth quarter. This is your home for Zephyr and Tartan football. It's SEC Sports. Drownings are the number one cause of accidental death for young children. Simple safety steps are the best way to prevent these tragedies. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Designate an adult water watcher to watch kids in and around water. Save the phone calls and texts for when the kids are out of the water. Properly fence all pools with fences at least four feet high and with self-closing, self-latching gates. When above ground pools aren't in use, remove the ladders. When pools aren't in use, cover them. Teach kids to stay away from drains. And if a child is missing, check the pool or spa first. Consider the steps you take, then add a few more. Because you never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does, simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. Second and six from the 15 alongside John Miller. I'm Alex West at the handoff again to Newbeck as he's met that time. And for the first time in a long while, the Titans are able to snuff that one out after a gain of about four. It'll be third and two from the 11. Can Tartan step up? They haven't been able to stop the run in about the last three or four possessions. I mean, it's just been dominant. But you know what? I think a lot of what we're seeing right here especially for Matamida. I don't know if their offensive line has gotten better, but I think Newbeck playing him at fullback and using him a lot, I think it's made a huge difference getting a big guy like that. So third and two. Hand off to Prammel. Prammel's able to spin out of a tackle. He's well across the first down marker, down to the eight yard line. And we will have first and goal here for Matamida from the eight. Yep. This will be first and seven here, Alex. Um, from they got seven yards to go to get it in the end zone. Who is going to come? This is this is the battle of the trenches. This is Smash Mouth football. Who's going to step up? This is the section championship. For some of these guys, this could be the last game they play in their high school careers or ever. 
So they'll go first and goal from the seven eye formation again. Newbeck and Prammel have been very effective. They hand it to Prammel again. He hits the hole, pushes forward down to the five after a gain of two. And will snap up second and goal from the five. Yeah, I think Matamida is going to continue to let the, the clock run. And uh, I think it's going to come down to can Matamida's defense stop Dorian Singer. Well, the thing that we've noticed, too, is that we've been – Monomedai's defense has been fantastic today. Oh, they've just been getting in the backfield, Alex. They've had a lot of tackles for loss. Tian Dang is one of the better high school running backs I've seen play high school football. I mean, every time he touches the ball, he has a chance to take it to the house. And Monomedai shut him down. Besides that 30-yard run he had, which was called back thanks to a holding, um, that was it. And that, was, didn't even, that play didn't even count. Second and goal from the five. They'll go eye formation again. This time he'll keep it as he rolls out to the left as a quarterback. DeVore, he got it, touchdown. Wow. Manamidai, Tyler Tangwall on the scoreboard again. His second of the night, and he'll take a 20 to 14. Lead. He's got his feet in on this one, Alex. There ain't no question about this one. It's a touchdown. Matamidai goes up by six. And one thing we haven't talked about at this game is Matamidai's fan base is going nuts. They showed up here today. I honestly think that there are more Matamidai fans here tonight than Tartan fans, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, for a section playoff game at Tartan. I mean, this mod meet, I, we always talked about it. This town really shows up uh, for their high school teams. Yeah, you got those feet in. <laughs> Great job by Tang. Well, ref had a perfect look at it. Let's see if uh, the kicker can make this one seven. This is a big extra point. We'll wait the extra point. Right-footed kick is up. Hangs there a little bit, good. but it is definitely good. And so a 10-play drive that spans 73 yards and laps four minutes off the clock. Results in a Matamidi 21 to 14 lead. Yeah, they took a little bit of time off in that fourth quarter. I mean, they took a lot of time off in the third to the fourth. Um, they've, like I said, they've been controlling time of possession, Alex. Um, what did they have, a 13 play drive a couple drives ago? Um, they're playing real well. I mean, this, this is, uh, Coach Metzl's calling a great game. Well, if you look too, John, at the last couple, you said coming into the game, we talked about how important possession and maintaining possession of the football was going to be important. When you look at the last couple of drives, except for the one that ended the first half for Matamidi, 10-play drive, 8-play drive, then a 12-play drive before they had a couple of three and outs to start the game. But really, Matamidi has held on to the ball, and that's been the difference in this game. But when you look at it the other side, too, Tartan has the ability to score quickly. Yeah, we saw that in the last drive with that huge bomb to Dorian Singer. Uh, but that was just Ethan Moss losing track of the football. I think that was just a mistake on him, and he got burned. But Tartan, Tartan's got the ability to win, go out and win this game, just continue, maybe throw up like 21 points in 10 minutes, you can see. Washington on the kick return is able to get out to the 35, and good starting field position for the Tartan Titans as they'll go first and 10 from the 35 with 10.06 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Nice kick return. You know, it wasn't too far. Washington got it at about the 15. Great blocking ahead of him. He takes it about 20 yards. So for Tartan, on their last drive, the 67-yard touchdown reception by Dorian Singer. Two plays, 67 yards. 10 6 on the clock. Do you start thinking maybe trying to wind the clock down a little or go no, to the air? I, th I think you just got to play your offense. A little trick play here this time for Tartan, but it's snuffed out immediately as they tried to flip it. Should be an official forward pass to Tian Dang from the quarterback Lockhart. Tom Brady pass, a little tap pass to the running back where he gets usually touchdowns inside the red zone. That's a play we're seeing a lot of. I haven't seen that in high school football. Um, once again, they're just trying to get Dang going, and it's just another tackle for a loss, Alex. I don't know what on earth Tartan could do to get better, but they're getting beat in the trenches, just dominated in this game. So after the loss of one, second and 11 from the Tartan 34-yard line as the Titans will approach the line, they'll go pistol formation, wide receivers, two here on the near side, two out to the right. Dang is the running back in the backfield. They will hand it off to Dang again. This time he's able to create some space. Hannah Blocker up, chooses to go back into the inside. And he gets to the 45-yard line on a nice 11-yard rush. It'll be first and 10 for Tartan. A nice game there by Dang. I mean, wide open hole. I mean, if he missed that one, that was going to be trouble. Watch this. Great blocking. Seal block right there. Just opens her up. And those yellow gloves by Matamita have been throwing me off on flags all game. <laughs> you think there's a flag flying. It's a hand flying in the air. So first and 10 for Tartan from their own 45-yard line. 
Again, these two, the last three section championships between these two schools have been very competitive and have been very close. We've been treated to another one tonight. Ball here on the near sideline, looking passes incomplete. Great defense right there. Like you said, I agree. Great defense as he was looking for Joe Kearney near sideline, but under threw him just a little bit. Good coverage as well by Edward Breen. And it'll be second down and yeah, 10. Breen just kind of, you know, he just boxed him off. He forced him. He didn't let him have that cutback lane to go back to the ball. He just kept running with him down the field. There's nothing he could do. I mean, Lockhart's done a heck of a job just putting the ball up to where his wide receivers can get it, but that one was just a little too far inside. I mean, Lockhart's had a heck of a game, and he's got a cannon, but that one just, just a little off. So second and 10 from the 45 of Tartan. We'll spread him out again as Lockhart will get the snap. Pocket protected well. Pass! Oh, in and out of the hands. Almost <laughs> intercepted by Dominic Fetty. He has one. No, he doesn't have one. The Zephyrs have three in section play already. He almost had one himself. They have one tonight. Third and ten. Yeah, just a little out of the way of Fetty. He gave it his all. That one just skipped right. Oh, it looks like it just went through the wickets. Hit him right in the chest. That's tough. You know, that's why he plays safety, not wide receiver. You know what I mean? And so we'll see if that comes back to bite the Zephyrs or if they're able to withstand it. The crowd in blue and gold here on the near sideline making some noise as it's third and 10 from the Tartan 45. Lockhart gets a snap. Pocket is protected. Thrown back to the right sideline. Pass is incomplete as he was looking for Kearney. And that is the stand that the bottom Eli Zephyrs needed. Wow. Wow. Three straight passing plays. <laughs> I don't know. Just great defense. I don't know what other way you could put it. I mean, it really looked like Tartan might have a chance to get that one. Uh, Kearney, you know, he's a good basketball player, but, you know, those hops can only go so high. Lockhart just a little off. Maybe the cold weather has something to do with that. It's getting cold here tonight. Uh, but it's football weather, and uh, he's he's giving his, his guys a chance to make plays. The offense is just, it's just a game of inches, Alex, and that's what they're missing it's by inches. Singer on the punt. End over end is a wave off Will, it, Will Weisner and having to go back to it as it took a Matamidi bounce back to it with Brandon Olson. And so with that, the Zephyrs will take over first and 10 from their own, waiting for the official spot, should be about the 32 yard line. So here we go. Can Tartan stop this Matamidi running offense? Because if they can't, Matamidi is going to take about five or six minutes off of this clock, Alex, and it's not going to be good. Well, again, we've, we've looked at this game too. And we've seen, especially in that second quarter and here in the th or in, in the third quarter as well, how the running back combination of Crammel, Hull, and Newbeck have just been so lethal that you haven't really been able to stop them on the past couple of drives. Yeah, I mean, I think the big difference is Newbeck. I mean, I don't remember hearing his name called at all or being the fullback at all a month ago. And off to Prammel. Prammel hits the hole. And again, the holes running up the middle, too, have been huge. He gets a gain of four that time. It'll be second and six from about the 35. Tick, 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 Alex. That clock is going to tick. And uh, just great blocking up front. Prammel, ooh, just taking on that linebacker and pushing, pushing him back a couple yards. And uh, Tartan's getting feisty here. They've, they've, uh, they've had a couple of penalties. I, I think they're a frustrated team right now. So second and six from the 36, 8.06 remaining here. Matamirai 21, Tartan 14. And the Goliath formation again, expecting a run here, probably off to the left side. No, they will fake it to the right side as he pitched to Prammel as he's down after a gain of about two. Flag comes in late. It could be a hold, Alex. This would be huge. Well, the Tartan defender, Jake Schwinghammer, was clapping his hands as if it was against Matamirai. It's a spot foul. And so the gain of two will probably be negated here at some point. Now let's see what the call is here. Refs, refs are trying to talk it out, and that's good. You gotta get the call exactly right here. And you know what? I feel like we've talked about this a couple games this year, but at the, how about the refs doing a fantastic job in these high school football games? I mean, they haven't had any controversial calls. Uh, they're just letting these guys play and calling the obvious penalties, and that's all you can ask for from these groups. But so the holding call is confirmed. Oh, yeah. Swinghammer was tackled. Excuse me, who's 47 for Tartan? Yep, that Swinghammer was absolutely tackled to the ground. And that's going to get called every time by the back judge. So second and 19, that clock's still going. Uh, do you try to attack him through the air, Alex? That's the question. I think you just run it. Now, I, I, you got to put points up on the board. you got to steal this game. 
Second and 19 from the Montemidai 23 yard line. We have a whistle and I think we're going to get a timeout and it will be a timeout for the Montemidai Zephyrs. Their first of this second half with 7.36 remaining and the Zephyrs leading 21 to 14. Yeah, I think that's a good timeout call. You got second and 19, you have to pick up this first down. You gotta keep the clock going. Uh, you can't give the ball back to, to Tartan. Their, defense, their offense can only be held to 14 points for so long. I mean, we saw they could score instantaneously. I mean, this is a good team. Uh, and that's why they're undefeated on the season. We got a ball game. Here we go. I, mean, I wonder what Coach Metzl is saying down there. Just you know, I think he's just telling his team to play their game. Again, the Section 4-5A bracket. Montemidai blitzed through North St. Paul and then upended Minneapolis Washburn to reach the Section Final game. And the Tartan Titans receiving that first round by were able to demolish the St. Paul Central Minutemen in their opening round matchup. And really, you almost wonder if that week off may have hurt the Tartan Titans because as you've said a couple of times tonight, they just haven't looked game ready. They really haven't. It'll be second and 19 again. They'll go I formation, DeVore the quarterback. With two in the backfield, it's new back this time, it'll be Hull. And the ball's on the ground, it's got two by Singer. Singer's got space, he goes to the outside. 10, five, make it three for Dorian Singer. It's coming Singer. back, Alex. I think there was an offsides. I think it's offsides. That would be the hard, hard count break. got him. The hard count got him, Alex, I think. Well, how much for us was that a conversation in the regular season when it took the hard count? It's false oh start. My. No, it stands. Again, three touchdowns on the scoop and score for Torian Singer. And we're an extra point away from being tied. I don't know if that had to have been an illegal motion. Yeah, it definitely is not a false start. It had to have been. I don't get it. I'd love to see the snap, but again, you see there the scoop and score from Dorian Singer. He's the best player on the team, so why not give him his third touchdown on the day? What a star this young man is, Alex. I mean, this kid can do it all. Uh, he's just an athlete. When he Next year, when he makes his commitment, I guarantee you it'll be as an ATH to whatever college he goes to and they're gonna find a position for him. Extra point is good, and unexpectedly, quickly, we're tied at 21. Holy buckets, is that a quick turnaround. I mean, Matamita is second at 19. I know they might have been forced to punt after two plays, but you know, just to get that one away. As we were talking about, I was talking about how big of an impact Newbeck's making. He just goes out and makes me look bad. <laughs> no, Newbeck's had a heck of a game. You can't let this get him down. You got to continue to play your offense if you're Matamita. And we'll take another look at it here. The flag for illegal motion. I'm not, definitely not false start. I'm not sure what was there. I think that's a terrible call. Uh, I I don't know what happened. Maybe a, a receiver wasn't on the line of scrimmage, uh, something like that. I mean, that's the only re reason I could think of. But Dorian Singer again stepping up in the biggest moments that matter, even up, even evening up the game. And 21 all with 7.26 to play. The upcoming SEC sports calendar, we have girls hockey on the 7th and the 20th as White Bear Lake travels to Montemita, and then Stillwater will be at White Bear Lake, and then girls basketball on the 22nd and 26th as Elk River at White Bear Lake, and then Eastridge at Montemita. And that will wrap up the month of November. We have more basketball and hockey to come in December and into January and February as well. We hope that you join us for all those broadcasts on SEC Sports as myself and John will be calling the majority of those games, but joined by friends like Mike Peden and Jeff Dishler and everybody such as that. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of uh, great things going on at SEC TV. And uh, folks, remember, you can always volunteer at SEC TV if you want to come out and just watch games like this for free, and maybe even get some money. We're, we're always looking for people to come here and help out. You can call the number listed on the screen or email Arlen Becker at arlenscctv.org. These great things are always going on here at this wonderful, wonderful television station. So the Titans will set to kick off here. And it'll be Hull in back to receive. That's a boomer. Ty Decker as well, as it'll be Decker who fields it from the shadow of his own end zone. Running with a head of steam, he's able to get back to the 20, and he's brought down finally as he gets across. Looks like the official spot will be at the 25-yard line. It's a first and 10 for Matamina from the 25-yard line. And here we go, Alex. I mean, Matamina is just going to run the ball. And they don't really look like that. that Fumble meant too much to them. I mean, they're going to come out and just keep playing. Can Tartan stop them? I mean, that's a big thing. I mean, they're very fortunate with that fumble. I mean, not only that took that ball. I mean, like I said, no second to 19. But anything could happen. I mean, it looked like it would have been like second or third to 10. I don't know. We'll see. 
So first and ten for Manamidi from their own 25 yard line, 718 remaining. Score all even at 21. Pitch goes to Prammel this time, and he's met immediately, and that's the Titan defensive line that we saw in the regular season as they've stepped up here on this first down. Titan doing what they need to do. I mean, no holes were created on that one. I mean, defenders played their holes, and as you can hear, the coaches upstairs, they're just running to the ball. So it'll be second and ten again from the 25 yard line. They're going to need something, kind of a trickier play, Alex, I think, here to get a big chunk of yards. And especially, too, with how well the quarterback, Jonathan DeVore, has played tonight. I'm surprised they're not going to the air just a little bit more. Second and ten from the 25. High formation again, two receivers near side. They'll fake the end He's around. Got a hole, He's Alex. got it with speed and space. Ethan Loss trying to gain the outside, but a big gain of 20 yards as he's across the 45. And another fresh set of downs for Manamidi. Told they had to do something, Alex. Do a little end around to Loss. Fake handoff, handoff to Loss coming around on the jet sweep. And just a nice play. Nice play design. The whole defense bit. Look at that. Everybody just kind of stopped. And then loss was gone. <laughs> nice job by Singer. They let him play that kind of free range safety, let him do whatever he can, play the ball, and he uh, he stopped a couple huge gains for being touchdowns tonight. So a gain of 19 that time for Ethan Loss. First and 10 from their own 44 yard line for the Zephyrs. So the eye formation again. And off this time goes to Prammel. Ooh, he got to the secondary down into the Tartan side of the field as he's across to the 47-yard line. That's a first down, Alex. It'll be first and 10. He gets it down to around the 40. Nope, looks like it might be. They should move. The second and one. Never mind. That's close. The ref on the near side was past the marker. Confused me a little bit. So it'll be second and one from the 47-yard line. 557 and counting to go. Well, Matamida is going to try to run this to the end of the game. There's no doubts about it. I know Tartan has three timeouts, though, so we'll see. It could come down to red zone. It could come down to a turnover again. I don't know, but Matamida is not going to let Tartan get the ball back. High formation on second and one from the 47 of the Titans. And off to Prammel again, well over the line to gain, down to the 43-yard line. And after a gain of seven, first and ten, Matamida from the 43. I don't know why the clock stopped. I don't believe it follows collegiate rules when the clock stops after a first down. Well, it's inside two minutes if that's, if that's I don't know, but they stopped the clock. and Only 10 seconds has, has ticked off since that play was ran. I mean, they got to they let this one go down just a little bit more. You got to run this down to about five. So first and 10 for Matamidi from the Tartan 43. Big hole for Primal into the secondary, down to the 30-yard line. Why not keep handling it to Joshua Primal, who's been all over the Titans tonight? They got to hold on the ball. Singer's going for it. I mean, that was a great run there by Primal. He's beasting this one out of the way. Yeah, I think they're stopping the clock, Alex. It's a stop after every first down. So Prammel just continue. Look at Singer was trying to rip that ball out. He's got a knack for the ball. That's one thing to pay attention to. He could get another one. So gain of 13 that time for Prammel will be first and 10 from the 30. And again, the goal to wind the clock as much as they can. 4.55 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, I think uh, I think Coach Metzen said, hey, guys, let's uh, that, that was not enough time ran off the clock on that one. Let's slow her down a bit. Sixth play of this drive, which started at their own 25-yard line. Prammel under, not Prammel, Devorah again under center. This is time the handoff will be to Prammel. Prammel got a gain of about three, maybe four down to the 28-yard line. It's a gain of two. And it'll be second down. I'm going to run this one to down about four-minute mark. Even if Tartan's able to somehow get a stop here and ball back. This one, you know, I mean, I doesn't score on this drive. We could be headed to overtime, Alex. But uh, let's not forget, I mean, I doesn't score. Tartan only needs to get the ball into about the 35-yard range. I think they could hit a 50, 45-yard field goal. Second and seven from the Tartan 28-yard line. Pitch goes to Prammel once again to the left side. He tries to cut it back to the middle. He has the gain to the 20. Three yard line. That'll be a gain of five, and it'll set up third and two. And Tartan's going to call a timeout here. 
They're stopped the clock with 3.45 left to go. They have two timeouts left. This is a huge third down and about three or two or three yards here. I think uh, I think it's four down territory for Matamidi. Field goal does you nothing. So a third and two. Certainly you wonder, like we've, we've, God, we've called so many football games together, you wonder about the range of high school field goal kickers, so you don't know what that range truly is. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen Matamidi kick very many field goals this year, but the kicker um, for Tartan has been fantastic. Kierzek, he, uh, you saw it on the last extra point after the Dorian Singer touchdown, uh, two touchdowns ago now. He, uh, he kicked the ball over the, higher than the uprights. I mean, it was a booming kick. Uh, he's got the leg. Like I said, we've seen him. Uh, Coach Didiker put him in for a 41-yard field goal earlier this year, so he's got the leg to kick that far. Um, I think he's probably got a little more range than that, but that one hit the uh, the crossbar, the 41-yarder did, and, went, and I think it just missed. Kyle Oswald, the field goal kicker for the Matamidi Zephyrs. He had one last week against Minneapolis Washburn. He's not kicking either, so I don't think they're going to be kicking. So we'll wait and see here. Still 3.45 remaining. It'll be a third and two from the 23 after the Tartan timeout. Both sides have two left. You could see uh, you could see DeVore down there is taking control of this huddle. Look at that. I mean, that's what you like to see out of this young man. Um, DeVore, just a junior. So I think they found their quarterback for next year, Alex. Well, and such development for him, too where he's looked good he's looked great tonight and after the first couple of games we've called where he didn't really have the best of games he's been fantastic tonight and everything that the Zephyrs have needed that's what you have when you see a balanced run game. I mean, they've they've been phenomenal and it was you know like I said when they the last time they played why weren't they running the ball third and two from the Tartan 23 yard line two in the backfield Tangwall out to the near side handoff Newback's to Newback got, got plenty of room and it'll be first and for Matamidi from the 19-yard lines as they move the chains again. Tick, 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 tick. Here we go. Ref's going to start it. Here we go. 345. And for the Zephyr fans, after their third consecutive girls soccer state championship yesterday at the U.S. Bank Stadium, certainly looks as though the Zephyrs will look to have a chance if they're able to hold on and pull off the victory here. So 326 and counting. The Zephyrs will approach the line again. First and 10 from the Tartan 19 yard line. Titans with two timeouts left. Monomita with two as well. Under center, DeVore. And off to Prammel, who he got into the backfield. A nice play for a loss of two on that one. We'll set up second and 12. Tartan finally got into the backfield. They might have to throw it here. Alex. Something's going to have to happen. Or jet sweep. They're going to have to do another play. That'll get them a big chunk of yardage. Um, for Matamidi, their last touchdown that they scored was a five-yard reception by Tangwall. So they may, they should really, like you said, John, they should go to the air just one more time here with 240 and counting in this one. So go I formation, two in the backfield again. Newbeck and Prammel. Goes to the toss to Pram off to the right side. Big play, Dorian Singer, as he's tackled at the Tartan 17-yard line. Yeah, free range safety there, gain of four yards. It's going to be third and eight. And Tartan calls another timeout. 2.28 left to go. It's a ball game, folks. This has been a ball game all game. John, I'm going to ask you a question, and I know that yes, sir. you've been saying four down territory, go for it. Why not? I don't trust You're high school field coach. You're, but you're this close, clock is this far down. If it's third and ten or more, do you send the field goal team out? Yeah, I think if it's third and eight or more, I think you don't pick up anything right here. You, you kind of got to kick. And their kicker is warming up here, about to start. Um, yeah, he just kicked one. And then, uh, so we'll see. I mean, like I said, I don't trust high school field goal kickers. It's a lot of, it's a lot of stress to put on a kid in a section championship. Um, you need to pick up a couple yards here or first down. I mean, you, you don't want it to come down to the kicker. Drop, what's your best play right now? That's what you have to drop. What is your play that you think can get you the first down and win the ball game? You're looking at a, about a 34-yard field goal attempt right now. The seven for the step off and then the 10 of the back of the end zone. So about 34 yards out for the attempt that time of I don't even know oh, what, what play you do here because they've been so successful in the running game. Maybe you do a little slant with Tang Wall uh, on the near side. 
you said they got Sather. Here we go. Third and eight from the Tartan 17. DeVore under center. And off is to Prammel. Prammel up the middle. He'll be close. He's at the 11, but he will be short. They're going for the field goal. It'll be fourth and two from the 11. Go for it. I hear the coaching staff upstairs shouting fourth and two. I don't trust high school field goal kickers. I don't. You've had a heck of a drive to get you down to the 11 yard line. You only need two yards. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I get what you're running. That was what you, your bread and butter all game. I mean, I'm not going to crucify him. It's not like it was third and 12, which which I saw from Stillwater a couple years ago. It was like third and 15 with two minutes left, and they decided to run it. It made no sense down by seven. But, you know, Matamina, I think uh, the way their offensive line has been playing, you you go you go tell them to win you the game. Tartan took their final timeout. They have none remaining. Matamina still has two. Again, you look at that last meeting that we called, and Tartan just ran the field up and down, and two garbage time touchdowns for the Zephyrs, and you figured you'd get the same here tonight. But these two teams, when the calendar turns to November, they play close competitive football games. They live for this game, Alex. This section championship. I mean, you can't ask for, ask for anything better um, between these. I mean, you look at the last three games, all very close. We had the snowball two years ago, which came down to a fourth quarter touchdown. Uh, these teams are great. Matamita is going for it. Love the call. Don't care if they get it. Do you think that they're going to try to draw a tart They could. They have two timeouts. So fourth and two from the 11. DeVore goes back under center. Has Newbeck and Prammel in the backfield. Say they're in the near got side. Him. Tangled to the left. And got they got him. him. And it, that just may be the ball game. You, you knew that they were going to do that. Like when you asked that question, I was thinking it in my head. They were gonna, they were gonna do that because Tartan has had a nose or had a knack for offsides penalties the last two times these two have met. I know they haven't had that many tonight, uh, but that's a great play call by Coach Metzel telling his team. I don't know if they would would have called a timeout. I don't. They could have went for it, but I think they would have ran the play clock down to as far as they thought they could go. We can't see a play clock here, so Coach Metzel is gonna have a time in his head of whether he's gonna run the play or timeout. Um, but I guarantee you they talked about it the whole time. He, 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 they were talking to the offensive lineman, hey, you guys, I swear if you jump. <laughs> Conditioning <laughs> after practice. <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's great. They, they knew that they could get tired to do that. First and goal from the six, 220 remaining. Whistle blows and delay a game. Delay a game, so that'll back them up. It'll be first and goal from the 11-yard line. Again, you're certainly well within field goal. Again, you think within field goal range, where right now you're looking at about a 28-yard field goal attempt to send the Zephyrs to state for their first time since 2017. You don't want to rely on a field goal, Alex. Um, but yeah, 28 yards is still a lot for a high school field goal kicker. So we'll see. I know Coach Metzl doesn't look too happy down there about this call. I mean, it seemed really quick. Uh, delay a game, I thought, personally. Because it seemed that they just got set up at the line. They picked it up. Wow. They, and they pick up the flag, and the ball goes back to the six-yard line. I was going to say, that was super quick. Like, they literally just got to the ball. And here we go. They're first and six, six yards to go. I mean, but you, if Matamidi scores, you cannot count out this Tartan offense. I mean, it's going to come down to, you know, Tartan's going to have the ball on Tart on Matamina side of the field. Twelfth play of the drive. That has taken 458 off the clock. Hand off to Prammel. Prammel up the middle. He's in. Touchdown, Matamina. And the Zephyrs are 217. I think they let him score there, Alex. State. I think they let him score. They had to. No timeouts. They knew if they stopped him, the clock would be down. So now uh, Tartan's offense that could score 80 yards in 10 seconds with Dorian Singer, you got to double him. I don't care what it means. They have no timeouts. Clock's going to tick. And Prammel scores a great touchdown here. So let's watch this. Yep. <laughs> Tartan just let him go, pretty much. Uh, there's a defender there that could have filled the gap, and he decided not to. So 12 plays over 75 yards. That took off five minutes in a second. And the Zephyrs are a defensive stand away from returning to the state tournament. And the extra point is up, through, and good. A huge one at that, as it is now 28-21. Matamidi up with 20 minutes and 17 seconds. And you talk about the effort from Joshua Pamel tonight. One recept, one rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, another rushing touchdown. 
He's been all over the ball tonight, and he may just be the reason why the Zephyrs are going to stay. Yeah, he's been dominant tonight. They were 2-6, and six, Alex. 2-6. and six. But you knew this team had more in them than that. They lost a few close ones. They're coached by Coach Mensel. The legend continues. Um, he just does a great job with these kids. I don't know what to say. It's something about him. And this this program, They I don't think they ever count themselves out. Um, we'll find out post game, you know. We'll, 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 we'll ask him the tough questions here from Coach Metzl um, if they win. Uh, but they still have two minutes to get a stop. But Tartan could very well easily win this game. Uh, they're the better team overall throughout the regular season. Um, but I don't think they they came out to play tonight, Alex. So they really don't feel like it feels like Matamita has smashed them in the mouth since the get go and they went up seven and nothing. The Tartans, you know, they've come back. Uh, but they had a good they had a lucky break with the fumble. They forced the fumble. Uh, they got him a touchdown with Dorian Singer. Uh, I don't know. They, they all, now is their time. Uh, like I said, this this squad's full of a lot of juniors. Dorian Singer and Washington back to return the kickoff. It'll be the biggest one of the game, bringing the kickoff specialist for Monomedi, winds and fires. It'll be a squib kick this time. I don't like that call. I, I really don't, John. Right, now, now they only have 60 yards to go in two minutes, zero timeouts. How, it means they trust their defense. That's it, plain and simple. Uh, I don't like the call either, Alex. I 100% agree with you. Um, yeah, I just, whoo, ball at the 39, two minutes left to go. You got Lockhart, who's been Slinging the ball all game. Uh, you've held Tian Dang in check. Uh, you haven't held Singer in check. So they got the, Singer in the slot. This is the exact position the Zephyrs found themselves on the offensive side a year ago. Lockhart with time. Pass Kearney. complete. Kearney escapes an ankle tackle to the 35, to the 30. And a big strike play has a Titans in business. There's a penalty, Alex. Not too sure what happened after that play, but I think it was a late hit by Matamidi. It looks like there is a Titan down as a Titan coaching staff immediately over. We talk about the physicality of this matchup. It appears that it may have spilled over. I, all I heard was dirty come from upstairs. I looked away, and I think it was a cheap hit. Let's watch. So, yeah, you knew they were going to come out passing. Locker finds a wide open Kearney over the middle. Just wide open. Nobody near him. Nobody's even covering him. So he gets down. Ankle too. So we got this one in slow motion. Goes down here. You see there almost immediately the receiver Antoine Burns is looking for a helmet contact there, pointing at his head. You certainly hope anything but that. Yeah, not too sure. I mean, it didn't look too dirty from play. Looks like defender just tried to come in there and make a play. That's not good. You never like to see head injuries. Uh, this could be a 15-yarder. I wonder if we could see that replay one more time to see the actual helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit here. Well, as the conversation continues, 206 remaining. So here we go. Great shots here by our camera guys and gals. Let's then look at the sideline. So where is it? It'd be right about here. there. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't think he tried to hit him with the helmet Not either. Not intentional. But I, it definitely wasn't intentional, but that's a good call. That's the, that's the right call. Because um, you see he turned away, and I think Kearney's head went forward, and then just right as he laid the shoulder on him, the head hit there first. Uh, that's a tough break for Matamidi, but, I mean, you hope the guy's all right. So the ball will be marched off. It'll be first and 10 from the 14-yard line. And that's where doing that squib kick hurt you. It took nine seconds. It took nine seconds to get down to the 14. I mean, I hate the, yeah, like we said, I hate the call. I mean, if Coach Massel trusts his defense, I mean, he's the head coach of the team, not us. I mean, he trusts his defense. You can't blame him, you know. And you don't want to kick, I get it. You don't want to kick the ball to Dorian Singer. <laughs> kick return either, but I think you got to kick Titans approach the line, first and 10 from the 14. High snap, pulled down Coming by Lockhart. The Lockhart, as he escapes the blitz temporarily, still gets out of it. He rolls to the outside. He gains a 10 before being pushed out of bounds. Wow. That's a big boy play by Brandon Lockhart. Yeah, Lockhart's a stud, man. He can uh, he can do it all. He can throw. I mean, he's not the best of his legs. To be able to escape like that when he looked like he was sure escape from the jaws of a sack. Look at this. He's, he's getting wrapped around. He's got his legs wrapped around right there. He got his back hit. And, you know, he gets a gain of four out of it. What a play. 
Second and five from the nine. A lot of, yard line. A lot of confusion. Singer throw to up, the singer. cut, touch. Down, Tarta. Wow. A minute 38 left to go. Matamidai scores in 40, 47 seconds. 47 seconds is all it took. I told you, obviously, could score within 10 seconds. This game was nowhere near uh, being over. And now Matamidai has got to go down. They, they're going to have to pass. They can't just run. Uh, they have two timeouts, which is huge, but so is this extra point. Um, I think they're going for the win here, Alex. What a pass by Lockhart, I think too. they're going for the win. Well, when you think about that earlier play where the ball was not high enough for Singer and only Singer, that time it was, and it looks like you're right. Here the it is. Titans. Two-point conversion. Are going for the win. This is for the section championship, Alex. They, they miss. Pistol formation. Dang in the backfield. Two receivers out to the left. He's looking for Singer again. Pass complete. Is he in? I don't think he's in. Is he didn't he get in? in. He's the still ball. going he back. He caught the ball. Not the ball. He was enough. in the end zone, but the ball wasn't in the end zone. Oh, my God. What a stop. It, we, he was in, but his, the ball was not. The, the ball was not in the end zone. The Titans go for two. Singer close, but not close enough. And the Zephyrs lead 28-27 with a minute 38 remaining. He had the ball, and he caught it out of the end. Like, his body was in. The ball was not. Holy cow. Right call? Everything was good. Watch this. Ref had a perfect view of it. He catches it. Maybe on that pullback, but I don't know. I don't think he was close. That ref had a better view than we did. I can't see from here. Wow. <laughs> and just not good enough. Folks, Amada Midai has just pulled off one of the biggest upsets in high school football section championship plays I think I've ever seen. A team that was 2-6 and six in the regular season somehow is going to state in 5A. The Titans will line up to attempt the onside kick. Oh, they still have the onside kick. Excuse me. It's not over yet, but it's uh, – because I, I said this, I, you know, a couple weeks ago, I was broadcasting White Bear Lake by myself. I was like, you know, <laughs> onside kicks really don't happen. They, you hardly ever recover them anymore, and then they did. So, you know what? I'm not going to jinx this one. Let's see what happens here. And uh, Camonia could just boot this right at somebody <laughs> right off the chest. So we'll see what happens. But, wow, this could be one of the biggest upsets I think I've ever seen. So, so with 138 remaining fourth quarter of play, no timeouts for Tartan. Two left for Matamidai. Here we go. This if is somehow walking. Tartan recovers this onside kick. There'll be a short field and a chance to win. Camonier, the onside kick, it has to clear the 50. The onside kick attempt. It's a short squibber, bounces high. It's gotten to by Sather. That should seal it. The Zephyrs are heading back to the state tournament. Man, Sather only let that one go about seven yards, too. I mean, Regardless, the kick wasn't far enough, but whoo, whoo, they got lucky there. If he would have bobbled that one just a little bit, it's easily Tartan's ball, but that's ball game, Alex. I mean, that's uh, that's the end. You got Mata Midai, who finished third, third to last in the Suburban Great Conference, two and three in conference, two and six overall. Lost 41 to 14 a month ago, almost exactly a month ago to this Tartan squad. Just come out here and punch the Titans in the mouth. It's David and Goliath. So we're going to call them the Matamidai Davids because the Goliaths went down tonight, Alex. And so for, for so many years, the opposite roles would have been played where Matamidai would have been Goliath and Tartan would have been David. But in victory formation, the first knee down by DeVore. And the elation, the joy on this Matamidai sideline. And on the Tartan sideline, we can't see it because we're on the Matamidai side. Just shock. If you think about it, do you agree with that decision to go for two? I love it. I love it. It's high school football. You're going for the win. Um, I I don't know though. I think I think they could have held Matamidai. Your 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 extra point kicker has been almost a lock, a virtual lock all year. It's tough, but that's why we're not head coaches. He wanted to go for the win. Um, maybe he just didn't know if his defense could stop Prammel uh, and. Uh, call here I don't know I don't know it's a gutsy call and it's not one that I hate either the knee down again it'll be a third and there's coach Didaker on the sidelines and 
Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, John, these past three championship games have been classics. And tonight, certainly no exception, as they may have to take one more knee to kneel it down. And you think about the effort that Dave Metzel has given this Monomedi Zephyr team that when they were two and six and seedings came out and you wondered what it was going to be as the Zephyrs storm the sideline. They are the pinnacle once again in class four five A as the Zephyrs return to the state tournament. Wow, Alex. All right, I'm going to go. We're going to have an interview with Coach Metzel after this. So we'll have an interview with Coach Dave Metzel as John is on his way down. A quick recap of the second half. It started with a Monomedi five yard or three yard rushing touchdown by Prammel. Then it was Tartan responding almost immediately. Doran Singer for 67 yards and a touchdown reception. Matamidi would respond again on their next play with a touchdown reception to Tangwall. That made it 21-14 for the Titans. Then on the next Matamidi drive, Dorian Singer with a 24-yard scoop and score that evened it up at 21 all. Then Matamidi took a long five-minute drive that resulted in another Prammel six-yard rushing touchdown, and you figured that might have been it. But Tartan had the ball, and they were able to score on a nine-yard Dorian Singer touchdown that you thought maybe they chose to go for two. Dorian Singer just not quite there. As again here recapping the highlights, you see Lockhart were able to wind his way out of the pocket. Again, the great ball that time for Dorian Singer with nothing but green grass and turf behind him, and that made it 14-all. Or 21 all rather. No, 14 all, excuse me. Then here, Matamidi to go up 21 14, the little sideline end zone route. That time for the Zephyrs. There's a handoff to Prammel. Here's the scoop and score by Singer. And again, you just see off to the races again. The Singer with four touchdowns on the day for the sophomore. And that evened it up at 21. Then Matamidi again, Prammel, as they just really let him into the end zone to give them time to be able to maintain that one. And then finally, the touchdown that time to Dorian Singer that you thought, okay, with the extra point, they can tie it up. And then the two-point conversion just inches short of being successful. We'll be back for the interview with head coach Dave Menzel in just a moment. This is your home for Tart and Monomedi football on SCC Sports. Bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Dad! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. I'm always the first one up. I'm always up for a challenge. I'll overcome any obstacle. I don't believe in limits. I refuse to be average. Twenty-eight, twenty-seven. The Zephyrs upset a significant one at that. The Tartan Titans by a final of twenty-eight to twenty-seven. Down on the field, John Miller with Monomedi head coach Dave Metzel. Coach, 28 to 27, you guys are two and six on the season. What does it feel like to get to this point and upset an undefeated team? You know what, it feels awesome. Our kids came out and, and the one thing we've been saying to our kids the whole year is they've stuck with it, you know. Uh, we had some struggles throughout the regular season, but they, they kept working hard. They, they kept a great attitude, and it was just a matter of trying to put everything together. Yeah, you said they kept working hard and they have a great attitude. I know uh, a month ago it was 41 to 14. What is the difference in this team? I mean, it looked like a totally different ball ball club in a month. Uh, you know what? They, w w we just 
what we talked about throughout the week, it was about us. Um, it was about how we could come out and play. Um, and uh, throughout the year, we've been, uh, we've been our own worst enemy uh, at times. And the kids came and, and played a, a, an unbelievable game. You know I can't let you out of here without talking about the Statue of Liberty play. How long have you guys been practicing that one? You know what, we put that in this week. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, something a little bit different, trying to uh, trying to get us out in, op uh, out in the open and see if we can spring one uh, for a long one. Uh, we felt like we needed to do some things. That's a great Tartan team. I mean, they're athletic, they're physical. Um, Singer is an unbelievable player, um, and they have many more uh, as well. So, and coach, you seem to have a lot of turnover from you know every year. You know, you seem to rotate seniors and play a lot of seniors. What do you have to say about the senior class this year, and for them to just overcome all the odds to make it to the state tournament? You know, it says a lot about them. It says a lot about our juniors, our sophomores. You know, just uh, the fact of staying with it and, and staying together. You know, so, uh, when you struggle throughout the season, it, it's real easy to start. Uh, point fingers. It's real easy to start kind of breaking apart and um, our seniors have been a, a strong core uh, to kind of keep everything together. So how long are you going to let your team enjoy this before you uh, get ready for state? Well, we're practicing tomorrow at 8, so they get tonight and then we'll be back at it. All right, thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations once again. Thank you. All right, that'll do it from SEC TV as Matavidi takes down the undefeated Tartan 28-27. to